Welcome everybody to the Berwick Planning Board. This is a regular meeting for Thursday, August 15th, 2019. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> oh, that's not gonna make I it, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I learned to not put your mic on. All right, just a couple things before we start the meeting. The planning board members present tonight, we have regular member Sean Winston. Uh, we have Nicole Fecto, regular member. We have Mike LaRue as a regular member. And then we uh, like to welcome Frank Underwood back to the board. You've been around for a long time. We've got the resident knowledge who's oh. somebody who's lived in town for a very long time. So as you know, a lot of you know, Paul Bovere is uh, recovering. So Frank has volunteered to... Uh, take his position for the time being until Paul is ready to come back for the meeting. So I appreciate that. So you're all sworn in. And um, so tonight for voting purposes, uh, Mike, you will be um, voting this uh, tonight. Um, all right, before we start the meeting, so we had a resignation from the planning board, Niall Shore, who was the vice chairman. So uh, we need to make a nomination, or we need to nominate a new vice chair. So I'd like to make a motion to nominate Nicole Fecto as vice chair. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Abstaining? Yes, I'm abstaining. I'm not going to yes. vote against myself. Okay. Uh, and Nicole was the secretary, so the secretary <laughs> really has a ceremonial position on the uh, planning board. There's not a whole lot that goes along with it since uh, you don't really have to keep minutes um, since James is doing that. But uh, we do have a position where you have to, we have to have a secretary. So um, I'd like to nominate Sean Winston, the secretary <laughs> of the Berwick Planning Board. I second that nomination. <laughs> Further discussion? All in favor? No? Or abstaining? <laughs> I'll abstain. By the way, I voted for myself. <laughs> you did. I remember. I, let you know I remember you voting for that. yourself. And you should vote for yourself. <laughs> I think we, that was in the minutes so that you right. voted for yourself. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Nicole, for, um, well, you know, taking that and not voting against yourself. Thank okay, you. moving on to public comment session. Public comment session is open to any resident or property owner in the town of Berwick to come forward and talk about anything that relates to the planning board. Please be aware that we have three public hearings this evening. So I'd like to ask if you could just reserve your comments. If, you, if you're here for those three public comment sessions uh, or three public hearings to reserve that for the public hearing, we'll have more than plenty of time. Uh, but public comment session is open now. Feel free to come forward to the podium. Anybody? Any takers? <laughs> going once, going twice. All right, we'll close the public comment session. We will have another public comment session at the end of the meeting before the adjournment. Moving on to the approval of minutes for the August 1st, 2019 meeting. And I was not present for that meeting, so I won't be voting on this. <clears throat> they looked fine to me. I didn't see anything. Okay. I didn't see anything in there. Yeah, no, no, no. I move we approve the minutes for the Thursday, August 1st meeting. October. As written. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? Abstaining? I will abstain. I wasn't there. Okay. So that's three in favor uh, and two abstaining. Moving on to a public hearing. This is for 173 Route 236. This is in the R2 zone. The applicant is Four Corners Clean. This is a public hearing just about this application only. We had a site walk earlier this uh, afternoon or just about an hour ago at 530. So this is for the this application only. Feel free to come forward. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, or uh, anything that you'd like to share on this application. 173, Route 236, Four Corners Clean is the applicant. Going once, going twice, okay. We'll close the public hearing. Moving on to a continued public hearing. This is for conditional use application. It's a parking facility at 71 Sullivan Street, map U3, lot 11. It's in the CI zone and the applicant is the town of Berwick. This is for this application only. Feel free to come forward and talk about this application. And just state your name and your address for the record, please. Yes, good evening. My name is Sarah McDaniel. I'm an attorney. I represent Louisa Sheldon, uh, who's here tonight uh, with her husband. Uh, they are the immediate abutters to this property. Um, 
a few different items that I just want to um, make everyone aware of. Of course, this is the um, area that's been turned into a parking lot that the town didn't even think they needed a permit for at all and went forward even though we had objected and then they finally did realize and came back in the spring with um, a barely minimal permit whatsoever and that's why it's been continued because they basically showed up with nothing and said we want to do a parking lot say yes please they've now submitted um, uh, something slightly better than the, than the nothing that they had before but I still think that that what they have is inferior and it certainly doesn't meet all of the standards um, as the um, it, and again procedurally uh, this issue was open so all the documents were supposed to be submitted uh, a week in advance and we were we received these things on Monday so less than that week in advance but again why should the town have to comply by its own procedural rules um, but nevertheless we did what we could to try to uh, review the documents um, in time uh, and I obviously couldn't get anything submitted to you in advance that one week because they hadn't submitted anything in advance most of what I'm uh, going to say here I'm going to be speaking for, but I do have uh, this one page with my sort of bulleted list of items, and then there's a, a visual on the back. Uh, can I uh, give you guys each a copy of this? And, sure. Um, I don't know who's here, where the town went. Thank you. Oh, thank you. He's sitting right. Yeah, he's right. The empty yeah. seat right next to he's your to client. Go print something. <laughs> Excuse me. Can I have a copy of that also? Yeah. Um, so, first off, again, remember that the burden is on the applicant to prove that they have met all the requirements. Um, one of the issues that I wonder about is whether or not they actually a conditional use permit they certainly need conditional use approval but I think they also may require a site plan approval I don't know because they haven't provided us enough information to tell if you have an increase of 5,000 square feet of impervious um, area that requires a site plan approval and although it may seem nonsensical to some people under your ordinance a gravel parking lot is legally defined as impervious surface for the purposes of that calculation so they have not shown us a survey, so we haven't confirmed what the area of the parking lot is, uh, uh, what the area of the lot is, nor what the area of the parking lot is, nor have they shown us what was the area of the prior parking lot before, um, or the area of the buildings that were there before. Certainly going from a 22 lot space, which um, was the information presented at prior hearings that the prior use uh, before the demolition had a 22 lot parking space up to the current 68 lot parking space. Uh, that is um, definitely an increase of well over 5,000 square feet. So the first thing I would ask is that we have to have the applicant show us whether or not they actually um, should be complying with the site plan review information. The second thing, uh, and I think that the memo that goes along with this from, uh, from the uh, director of planning indicates there's a handful of th information that, again, they have not provided. They didn't actually provide you with a survey. They went and, and did a survey, so I think, but they haven't provided you with a survey, which really makes me wonder what's <laughs> what that survey shows, why they wouldn't have simply provided it. That should be simple. There's no reason to waive the survey requirements, uh, so I certainly think that that should be provided. Um, there is an 80% lot coverage requirement, and again, I don't know whether that's met or not. The information they've given you doesn't give you enough information to know that. Uh, so I do request that you not waive the survey requirement, have them provide the survey, uh, and then specifically scale, topography, and then the recording requirements of the site plan should be met. Um, one information that is uh, specific, it seems like a little detail, but it makes a big difference. Under the ordinance, section 7.7, .7, each parking space is supposed to be 9 feet by 18 and a half feet, and the aisles are supposed to be 26 feet wide, and the plan that they provided, each lot is undersized by a half a foot, and the aisles are undersized by 2 feet. That adds about 6 feet on um, both of their little two, two aisles, um, uh, or, or close to another thousand square foot of, of area there. So again, that information is going to have to be addressed and what they're going to do to try to fit that in is something that's going to be very important. They did not include any hours of operation. And here, when you're in a conditional use permit, 
you know, the Ms. Sheldon understands, regrettably, but, you know, there is allowed to be a parking lot next to her property, but the reason for all these standards is to protect the existing residential uses like hers that are there. And so making sure that we limit the hours of operation so that you don't have nighttime use is going to be important. Uh, the fence is good. Uh, the fence could be better. I think it was an eight-foot fence under the prior uh, prior owners, and we would request that you require an eight-foot fence uh, for this use. And um, again, it's very important to make sure that they do have the buffer areas landscaped. Now, the big fat bullet is perhaps the biggest and most important of all, and this has to do with the stormwater drainage. And on the stormwater strain drainage, again, for the conditional use standards, they do have to ensure that surface water does not adversely affect the neighboring properties. If, in fact, they do meet the threshold requirements to have to submit a site plan review, they do have to submit a full stormwater management plan, and they haven't done that yet. One thing that confused me is when they were um, providing the information, they provided uh, by email to us um, on August 6th a copy of the plan in advance. And then, um, and he said, but they had, you know, that wasn't finished. They didn't have everything else to give. They didn't give us everything else until the 12th. But then when they included the application on the 12th and the application that was in your packet, there were some differences, a very important difference from that first plan. So on the back of, of that single page that I, give, that I gave you, um, this is a close-up of the plan that was emailed to me on August 6th. And you'll see this shows, um, this is the side of the parking lot that is uh, most close to uh, Louisa Sheldon's house. That little house uh, shown in pale gray is Louisa Sheldon's house right there. And you'll see in this version, they show right along the edge of those closest parking spaces, they show relocate granite blocks to create a vertical berm for stormwater conveyance, place blocks against each other, and fill gaps with gravel. So, you know, this appears to be what they had been proposing for stormwater management, but if you look on the application that's submitted in your packet, you'll see that that is not there, um, uh, is not there anymore. They don't have that, that uh, sort of curb made out of the old granite blocks. That's just omitted. <coughs> they do show... Um, uh, potentially swaling in that grass swale area for the stormwater management. But here's the thing, again, it's their job to prove that they can, that they will not adversely impact their neighbors with a stormwater management system. And under the prior use um, that Ms. Sheldon was very involved in trying to make sure she had her, her use of her home protected with the parking lot that they had there, there was repeated stormwater management problems and it wasn't until 1996 when she finally got them to agree to install a curb, a regular curb, that finally that put uh, some control on the stormwater management issues that her house was facing. And so here, why they started with something curb-like and removed it, I have no idea. Would this curb that they proposed be effective? That I don't know either. We certainly hope that the planning board will consider getting an engineer, hiring an engineer, of course at the applicant's cost, to review this and make sure that the stormwater uh, from this parking lot flow, will not flow into and, and further damage Ms. Sheldon's house. So again, if we would have normally requested a formal actual curb, whether these stones with gravel is enough or not, but certainly having nothing there at all uh, seems, even for someone who's not an engineer, to be not enough for the stormwater management. Um, Ma'am, I'm going to ask you to yep. wrap up your comments because we're going to yep. be addressing this again, and you're going to have plenty of opportunity to talk during old business. Oh, are, okay. I thought, because uh, if you're representing the applicant, I'll yep. give you plenty of time during the that 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 portion of the. Uh, of the application. Okay. I thought that was what you wanted us to do in this hearing, so I apologize. That, no, that's fine. Well, I will wrap up. Let me just quickly say the last little bullet item just for new, new items, of course, is the issue of lighting. Uh, there's no lighting proposed in their text. They say there's no lighting at this time. It's, I think it's very important that that be made a condition if, in fact, there is no lighting proposed so that they can't go in next year and just install some crazy lighting that ends up being a problem. If they do, they need to come before you so that we can have a chance to make sure we're protected. Um, so I will stop. So sorry, I thought that you were going to do all that in the public hearing part. Forgive me for that. Perfectly fine. All right, thank you. So and so, will my will my client be allowed to speak Absolutely. as well at that time? Okay, thank you. So this is a uh, public hearing. It's a continued public hearing for conditional use application parking facility 71 Sullivan Street. The applicant is the town of Berwick. Anybody else for this public hearing? 
All right, seeing as we haven't completed a site walk yet, I would uh, like to continue this public hearing and not close it. Are there any objections to that? No objection. Okay. Next is the conditional, it's a public hearing for a conditional use application, public facility, fire department, 20 Wilson Street, map U4, lot 142-1, the applicant is the town of Berwick. Feel free to come forward and talk about this application only. This is also going to be under um, old business this evening. This is the application just for the fire department. Hi, um, John Stoll, Long Swamp Road. Um, just here, uh, first of all, I want to say that I think this is fantastic. I'm really in support of them getting a new fire station. It's a long time coming. They deserve it. I would have been in favor of giving them several million more dollars because they need it and they're excellent. Um, I want to thank them for coming out on Christmas. That was really appreciated. <laughs> I really appreciate it. No one complained about that. That being said, I do want to make sure that it's de designed properly. Um, so I did want to talk about the pedestrian access issue. So I, I'm going to back up here and I'm, I'm going to try to talk as fast as I can so I fit within your time window. Um, this qualifies for conditional use. I believe it qualifies for site plan because it's 17,000 um, non-residential gross floor area. So it means it's bound by site plan review standards at Article 9.8 ZO. So uh, for that, the following standards are used to, by the planning board in judging applications for site plan review and conditional use applications. And shall serve as minimum requirements for approval of the application. Um, number A, letter A, which is one that I actually put in with you guys. Uh, conformance with comprehensive plan. All proposed conditional uses and site plans shall conform to the comprehensive plan of the town of Berwick and with the provisions of all pertinent federal, state, and local codes, ordinance, and regulations. Um, I have about four pages of comp plan backing. I don't know if you want me to read all that. Um, I think the most relevant one here is page 37 of the downtown vision plan. Uh, look to the village center as a trail hub. Establish and maintain connecting trails from downtown Berwick to outer parks, trails, and public buildings. That becomes pretty obvious that all public buildings need to have some sort of pedestrian access. Um, so that means if you're reviewing this for site plan approval, you need to make sure that it's in conformance with this standard or else you don't have a, a legal application. Um, as far as safety goes, I did go out on my lunch break today and took a few pictures. Um, got some awesome pedestrian access. I don't know if you want these to go to the chair or to the planner, but I labeled them all. <clears throat> the big point here is that I think we need to ask ourselves, if this was a private developer, giving the same excuses, would it be acceptable? The municipality should be held to the highest standard. How could you expect a private developer operating in downtown to do what you ask if you refuse to make the town follow the standards? It's an extremely small request. I can help you fix this. Anyone can help you fix this. This doesn't have to cost a fortune. Um, we can fix, and, and this little tiny issue, if we don't address it now, <coughs> when a big issue comes up, why would anyone address them? We, uh, we can't just let it go because it's small. Um, and you, you are obligated legally to enforce your site plan standards. I did want to point out also that since there is a wetland impact, I would, went and looked, and right now with 10,000 feet, I think you're at Tier 1. I think you have about 4,000 square feet before you would qualify to Tier 2 of impervious, and with wetland impact, you can include. Now, I mean, we don't want to Im impact wetlands if we can help it, but if we've already impacted 10,000 square feet in the downtown, I don't know what the difference of putting 4,000 square feet more is. I mean, it's, it's another impact, but if it satisfies that requirement. That being said, all those don't, do not need to go th directly through that area. There are other options that could be shown. I'd suggest that the town add a pedestrian easement onto the plan and a condition of approval just be added that uh, go ahead and let them start building, but prior to a certificate of occupancy being issued that uh, the, the trail gets constructed. And again, it doesn't have to be a fancy trail. We're just talking about a pedestrian easement and access way through the site. So I have other uh, backing if you want it. I'll provide it to... Um, your town planner, but um, I don't want to waste everybody's time. That's all I had to say about it, and I really do hope that this gets worked out because I really want to see this in this location. All right. Thanks, John. <clears throat> all right, continue on the public hearing for conditional use application, public facility, fire department at 20 Wilson Street. The applicant is town of Berwick. Please feel free to come forward. <coughs> Mrs. Bovair. Hello. <clears throat> nice I'm to see Pat, you. Thanks. I'm Pat Bovair, uh, 6 Country Lane in Berwick, and um, I'm one of the um, original people that was on Envision Berwick um, and worked up the, um, helped work up the implementation plan that everyone voted on and um, agreed to by voting on that. 
and it's basically I'm supporting what John said, that there are two things um, in the downtown vision section. Um, one is under recreation, and the policy is to look to the village center as a trail hub, and you are to establish, the action is to establish and maintain connecting trails from downtown Berwick to outer parks, trails, and public buildings. The responsibility for making sure that that happens is a trail committee, the town manager, and the board of selectmen. And it also shows um, under land use, there's another policy, make downtown pedestrian friendly and accessible by creating safe and continuous routes of travel to, from, and through downtown for pedestrians and non-motorized vehicles. And one of the actions under that is enhance or add sidewalks, crosswalks, and trails to ensure pedestrian access to all major points within the village center. The responsibility of making sure this happens is the planning board, the board of selectmen, um, the trails committee, and the town manager. So I think the board of selectmen, the planning board, and the town manager, and I'm not sure the status of the trails committee, um, it's not as active as it was before, concentrating mostly on um, the park area by the water. Um, I think um, these three groups um, have a responsibility to make sure that uh, what the town voted on for um, our trail concept um, happens. Thank you. Anybody else for this public hearing for the new fire station? Hi, I'm Kevin Gray, uh, Sawmill Hill. Um, I won't cite a lot of technical terms as John has already has and Mrs. Bove already has, but really it comes down to is what, uh, again, I was a, one of the people who were on the original Envision Berwick committee, is really to look at uh, what this town wanted and wants out of their municipal buildings. I fully support uh, the fire station. I fully support all of the municipal uh, buildings and and the actions that we've done and the, the traction we've started to create here and making this an accessible part opening our doors to our community and everyone else is is really important for this town to continue that um, cordoning off that area it's been cordoned off too long with the the school not being there you know, you start adding access to that, community access, you will increase the values of the property around it, and everyone will want to invest in that area. If you cordon that off, it's going to continue to be an, op an option for just nobody to go there. So why would, you know, it's, if there's no access, no one's going to go there. And the, that's not what we want in our downtown. We want all of that, especially that village overlay, to be accessible and not cordoned off. So having public access is very important. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else for the public hearing for the fire department on Wilson Street? Tom Wright, Cemetery Road, also chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Um, been a lot of discussion about this, a lot of talk about the comprehensive plan land use ordinances and uh, where this should go. As I've said before, is there's nothing in our current plan that precludes us from pursuing a plan in the future. Is one of my biggest concerns has been the budget. Is we hear that it's no big deal to put a trail through, but we need to have it engineered, we have to have it approved by the DEP, we have to build it. That's all money that has to come out of our existing budget. Right now, the building committee is struggling to get this building into budget now. Is right now, we're $22,000 over budget, and that doesn't include a lot of things that the fire department and the police department would like to have. So any money that comes out of this budget to pursue these trails at this time is I want you guys to sit down with the fire department and tell them where they should need to cut their project, because that is what's going to happen with this project. 
<clears throat> as I said, there's nothing in here that precludes us from pursuing this in the future. It's just that at this time, with this budget, I don't see how we can do this and do it equitably. We've also heard a lot about comprehensive plan, land use ordinance, and how the board has to enforce what happens, what is said in that. <clears throat> Under the subdivision regulations of the town of Berwick, Maine, Article 12, Section J, sidewalks. Sidewalks shall be installed within all subdivisions within areas designated as growth areas in the comprehensive plan. Where sidewalks exist adjacent to the proposed subdivision outside the growth areas, sidewalks shall be installed connected in a, to existing sidewalks. Where installed, sidewalks shall meet minimum requirements. Now, I don't see anything in that phrase, those phrases that say maybe they will be required to do it. There's nothing in there that says that they could be required, but it says they shall be required. And if you look at the long history of the planning board, and it goes long before your groups have been there, is we have had major subdivisions in the core of Berwick and no sidewalks installed. We talked about, we heard about public versus private, whereas if this was a private individual doing this, would we be expecting them to follow the same rules? Well, they haven't been following the same rules now. If you enforce this now on us, is then the planning board has not been enforcing those rules. So is think about that when you bring this forward, is think about you know what I just read about shall be installed. It doesn't say if it's convenient for the developer. It doesn't say if it's economically feasible for the developer. It says it shall be installed. We have projects right up here on Sullivan Street next to where we want to come out. Houses are along the edge, some very close to the road. There's a street that's been very commonly called a very dangerous street and yet we have houses being put in there where people are going to be backing out of their garage into the road. There's, there's access on the other side, there's access downtown. That developer was not required to put sidewalks in. Up on Old Pine Hill when the Dobson Woods went in. is all along Old Pine Hill and down Sullivan Street. There was no sidewalks put in there. This connection at the school street end so there was existing sidewalks connecting that. That was not forced to be put in. Up on Old Pine Hill again, we have two apartment buildings put in. It's, <clears throat> it's a perfect place to put a sidewalk in to create the, that access we, we want to the library and to start that position. But that developer was not forced to put those sidewalks in. So if you're going to be going by the books, Let's go buy the books all the way across the board. Anybody else for public comment session? I'm sorry, for public hearing. Uh, uh, Pat, just let me just add, let me just make sure that nobody else wants to come up. Dennis? <clears throat> Dennis Dupree, Berwick, Maine. Are you advocating a trail down through the middle of the property itself? Along the access road. From from Wilson Street coming no, from no. Sullivan, the new access road from Sullivan Street. So you're talking on Sullivan Street, so sidewalks, not not a trail through it. That, so there's so. been no discussion on whether or not the planning board's going to require sidewalks, and we'll get into that. In, or where? In yeah, but my business, question so is, where? so it's not coming it's, down it's public to public accessibility to not to allow pedestrians to move through that. I, I don't want to say too much during public comment session because I want to leave Well, my question else. would be this. If it's coming down through Wilson Street and you're possibly looking at putting a trail, would trails fall under rec? We're not talking a trail, you're like talking a trail a in the middle sidewalk. of the woods. Public accessibility, okay. be it a trail, be it a striped off section on a driveway that says that shows a picture of somebody walking or biking or S okay, so some type path. of access coming my, my question is, would it come from Wilson, Wilson Street? Wilson or over to Sullivan and Street. And right down by, long, by the basketball court. And then, Correct. Okay, but, but would that come under, not a trail, but would it come under recreation? Correct. So I believe there's a lot of money in recreation. 
that's been found. Okay. I knew there was a reason you came tonight. <laughs> I knew you just didn't want to hang out with us on a Thursday night. Anybody else for this public hearing? Alex Bovera, Country Lane in Berwick. Um, <clears throat> I guess I feel the pain as uh, somebody who's developed a few pieces of property when you have budget constraints, but at the end of the day, you make cuts. We have to make cuts to get your, your, your business past um, the planning board and through the town rules and regulations. And if that means you don't have granite countertops, then you don't have granite countertops. So I understand the pain, but you know you can't have it all, in my opinion, when it comes to that. Um, when I look when I look at the big picture of the town, I see that the police and the fire station there is, is great, and it's a great place, and I can't wait for the for the new complex. But I also can't wait to have my kids being comfortable around the police and around the firemen in that area as a play they can like pass by and and feel comfortable where they don't feel like oh that's the police and the fire we got to stay out of there like to me that should be a community centric feeling in there it should be an arms wide open feeling for the community in that area and you can't have that if people aren't allowed through there on a casual consistent basis and to me that is the most important thing that we're missing here is not the cost of the trail or you know can we make it work but what are we creating are we creating an island or are we creating a community area where yes the people have to be careful and there has to be rules about the, the traffic and the fire trucks and and whatnot but are we creating a place for the townspeople feel comfortable going with our public servants of the police and the fire i mean i hope so because that's what i would want to live in and that's what i would want to see in my town so. all right thank you alex anybody else for this public hearing for the <clears throat> town of berwick fire department all right, seeing as we haven't completed a site to... walk yet, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, and uh, wait, we have, and, and I have Pat, Pat too. the second time. I'm just gonna throw one thing in since I feel like it was addressed towards me. Um, when did you adopt the subdivision regs officially as a town meeting? Was it like a year ago? So all those sidewalks that are being discussed as part of the subdivision regs run under the sole authority of the planning board. So that means the planning board can waive those. It's irrelevant to this. Can the planning board waive the zoning ordinance? No, it can't. Only the Board of Appeals can give you relief from that. That's the end of that. Second, have we looked at our TIF district? I know we have a TIF district. I have no idea what's in it. I have no idea if we have money. I have no idea if it's negative at this point, but <laughs> I was afraid that might have happened. But we had a TIF district, so there are other ways. Okay. Pat, did you want to say anything? Okay, anybody else? All right, seeing as we haven't completed a site walk yet and some other questions might come up, I'm going to leave this public hearing open. I'd like to, unless there's any objection. Nope, I was going to make that motion that <clears throat> we leave it open anyway. Okay, is that a consensus, pretty much? Okay. Leave it open. We're gonna, so we're going to leave that open, James. Um, <clears throat> moving on to old business, 173 Route 236 in the R2 zone. The applicant is four corners clean. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to recuse myself from this. Okay. All right. I'm going to stay up here, though, because it's a full house out there. Okay. Back up. Uh, I'll turn it over to the town planner. Uh, sure. I do not have an additional memo for you since the last time we met. Uh, however, you did do a site work this evening at uh, 530, and uh, the applicant had um, laid out for you at the site where their parking would be um, in relation to the site. Um, there was some discussion about site distance and speeds um, on Route 236 in that area. Um, so some consideration ought to be given as to um, some additional signage to warn people of uh, driveways located in that area. Um, beyond that, um, I don't believe that there's anything relevant to the application and the ordinance that um, you need to go through at this time. Uh, you, you did have your public hearing, you did have your site walk, so. What about conditions of approval, findings of fact, and all that? Findings of fact will come um, for the next meeting once this application has been fully vetted, which we're close to that at this point. Um, conditions of approval, if you're feeling as though you need to work through any relevant to this application, I'd be happy to provide you that wording tonight. You can approve the application um, subject to the findings of fact for the next meeting. You know, the only thing that we did talk about was the signage on 236. Because that is, and like I said, that was the first thing I noticed when I pulled into your property. It was just like, I mean, the cars just fly down there. And then even pulling back out, um, and I know that one of the, the butters who showed up at the, at the um, site walk also suggested that too. And, and 
asking, uh, you know, working through James and DPW to get signage up there just to say that there's a blind driveway. So would that be something that we would put in the conditions of approval? Sure, you could condition the application on not obtaining their um, certificate of occupancy until such signage has been placed uh, on the roadway. Well, I don't necessarily want to hold them. What if, I mean, I don't know how quickly the town could get that done. So at least, you know, a call's been put in in six months or something like that. You know, I you, think can, that that, you can put any timeline you want on it. It's a, We would have to go through the state, yes. right? The state. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that, might take, that might take a while. No, not necessarily. No, yeah. no, should not. Okay. Does that sound good? All right. Does, do you want to come up and talk to address us any, any more? <laughs> you don't need to. Okay. So, uh, any further discussion from the board? The only thing I, the only thing I would ask Lee J is that um, the house is kind of unique. It has two wells and two septic systems. Yes, it does. So, if we could make sure there are HHE 200 forms on file, in particular, it should show the distances between well Correct. and leach fields and yes. other wastewater. Yes, it should. And whether or not there was ever any reserve area set aside for uh, problematic or expansion. Sure. No, absolutely. Any further discussion? Okay, so we will be uh, looking at, uh, the motion will be for the approval of this application this evening. And then um, in a couple of weeks we'll come back and we'll, we'll go approve the findings of fact. If I abstain because I have not participated up until tonight, um, you still have three three members of the board that can vote on this, correct? Right, and I will abstain as well because I this I visited the site walk, but I wasn't here for your initial presentation. Even though I feel Ooh. comfortable well, voting. On. Then you only get, you don't have a quorum. Two, yeah, because Nicole has already abstained. I will withdraw my abstaining since I <laughs> <laughs> since, since since you've since you've you've noted on the record that you've you know either watched the tape or. No, of the I mean, I did watch. I did go back and I did la watch last week's meeting and your presentation, and I did uh, come to the site walk tonight. So I mean, I, I, mean I, I do feel comfortable. I mean, I watched it in my living room yeah. too. So I mean, <laughs> um, you could certainly vote if you choose to. Then, yeah. okay. Uh, do we? Uh, all right. So, like I said, approval of the application would be the motion. I will make a motion that we approve the uh, application for uh, Four Corners Clean at. 173 Route 236. I'll second. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? And I'm going to vote. <laughs> gotcha. All right. That's four, four. in favor and uh, one abstaining. All right. You're all set. Okay. And I always say this, you don't f have to be feel compelled to stay for the rest of the meeting. So you can leave now. We'll, <laughs> we, we, won't, we won't be upset if you leave now. So some people feel like they have to stay for the whole meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, have a good night. Thank you, Kevin. I would like to rejoin the meeting, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. Uh, next on the agenda is the conditional use application for parking facility. The uh, address is 71 Sullivan Street. It's in the CI zone. The applicant is the town of Berwick. I'll turn it over to the town planner. Yes, you do have a revised memo from me on this. Um, since the last time the application has been reviewed, the applicant has gone back and revised the application material and the plan. As part of the submission information, the checklist has several pieces of information that are not checked off as submitted and or waivers requested for the planning board consideration. Those items include the following. On-site soil investigation by a licensed site, site eleva elevator evaluator, a perimeter survey certified by a registered land surveyor which meets all requirements of 9.8.2.B.I of the zoning ordinance, existing and and proposed utility lines, water, water, sewer lines, drainage easements, public and private ways, and written statements that meet all 11 requirements of 9.8.F.2.C of the zoning ordinance. Um, this does not necessarily mean that they need to be on the plan, but they could request waivers of that information. 
with justification as to why they would like the waivers. The planning board can ask the applicant if they are asking for waivers and why on, and why on each one of the items verbally at the meeting. However, a written request would be much cleaner for the record. The applicant has submitted a survey plan which has not been stamped by the surveyor. However, the assumption could be made by reference by, by the reference statement on the plan that the information is accurate <coughs> at this time. Based on this information, it seems that the applicant is improving the situation on the site by pulling back the proposed parking area of 68 spaces to include a substantial distance from the property lines. By pulling the parking, parking back, they are able to provide screening with six-foot high fencing along both neighbors' properties and adequate drainage along both sides of the property lines. The site currently contains a number of large granite blocks which will be relocated on the site to assist the demarcation of the parking spaces in the middle of the site. A great deal of pavement and gravel will be replaced with loam and seed which will assist with the drainage as well as visual improvements to the site. The driveway opening is being relocated to the north by approximately 50 feet from of the center line um, and widened to 24 feet which will provide much safer point of ingress and egress. At this time, the process would be, as you recall, the public hearing process has been left open for your continued hearing. Uh, additional testimony, which you did tonight, regarding the pro project now that a more complete plan um, and design has been put together, the board will need to complete the public hearing and decide to vote on the application um, at this time um, or and or provide a site visit. The findings of fact will need to be completed for the meeting following the decision of this application. Back to you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks. So this actually does trigger a site plan review. Uh, that is actually questionable if you look at the ordinance and what site plan review um, would require. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. 99. Page 99. Thank you. So under the, under the ordinance requirements for site plan review, 99? That's not in my ordinance. Uh, 112. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I must have a uh, what? a different version of the <laughs> it happens. What page? Blame that on James. Nicole? I have one twelve. One twelve. Okay. Yeah. You have Microsoft Blame it on James. Uh, section E. Yes, application two. for site plan. Uh, no, no, there is the. We're looking standards. at nine nine decimal eight. Nine point eight. Nine point eight. Yeah. Nine point eight. Um, Which starts on 111 and goes yes. to 112. So pre-existing uses or structures which would otherwise require conditional use or site plan review. A use which, which now requires conditional use or site plan review but which existed prior to the effective date of this ordinance or any amendment thereto may not be changed to another conditional use or, or requiring site plan review nor substantially expand or altered except in conformity with the ordinance pertaining to conditional uses. Substantial expansion is defined as floor area increase of 500 square feet or 25% of the existing floor space. There is no floor space. New material process or production or services and sales not normally associated with an existing use. That would assume to me that that's a, like a manufacturing or some type of operation in a building. An increase of 2,500 square feet or more um, of the amount of impervious surface, um, I think I mentioned in my memo, and if you look at the plan, they're actually decreasing the amount of impervious surface on the site. Change or modification to approved use. And no, modifica no changes or modifications shall be made in any approved conditional use or site plan approval without approval of the changes by the planning board. So under site plan review, the criteria is that the construction or addition of 3,000 square feet 3,000 or more square feet of gross non-residential floor area. There is no floor area. The installation of an expansion of 5,000 square feet of impervious surface. I think I've indicated that they're decreasing the amount of impervious surface. Um, the establishment or expansion of a mobile home park, which this is not. Projects involving extraction industries, which this is not. And multifamily dwelling units, which this is not. So it seems to me that a conditional use permit is what they're seeking. Site plan review does not kick in for this application. Can I ask a question? Um, what was, 
Do we have a survey of the property before the demolition with the house with or with the building and everything on it? I mean, are you using your calculations from that to this or from what it is now to this? Because what it is now, I don't think that that's fair because we're going off of, they want, they think that the use right now is the same use it was prior to demolition. So well, I believe, I want to say, I believe the previous application or the previous Mm -hmm. Well, there's a couple of things, and I think I mentioned that in my, in my memo regarding the survey. One of the things that was not provided um, to you but has been done is an existing condition survey, yeah. um, which I, I was not aware of until I had seen um, the information tonight. And that's why um, I had mentioned in my memo about not having a full survey right. because the survey that's in the plan that you folks have does not have meets and bounds it does not have distances um, nor any indication of pins being placed or being signed um, by a surveyor so um, I think that you need to see the existing condition survey in order to do that I had seen that information anyway the information that they've provided on the plan irrelevant of the survey certainly indicates that there's going to be um, less material um, less impervious material on the site. And if you're taking into consideration the fact that there was a building there that's now gone, right. um, you know, unless it's going to be compacted gravel, well, we which some gravel, of it is. We consider gravel an impervious, impervious material. Area. Here, so you're so. replacing impervious with impervious, so there's no net increase there. Well, I, we wouldn't know that for sure unless we knew how much impervious was I, I'm not previous. finished. Oh, I'm sorry. not finished. <laughs> there's no net increase there. Okay. There being the footprint of the building going right. from a building to the um, crushed stone. Right. However, they are adding a lot of um, loam and seed in areas where there was um, impervious area previously, which would suggest there is a decrease. They're also, well, they're also making impervious area where there was grass previously. So I would like to see the building superimposed on this and the previous parking, I just, so, just think, so we can see. Yep, I think you need to ask the applicant to provide that. Is there a plan on file when it was the sober home? Yeah, it must have gone through the process when that was approved. That plan should be uh, at least a starting point to look at paved areas, building areas, outbuildings, anything else that might have been on there. I have not seen that. Well, probably not a state plan review. Let's just get, we'll, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll give you plenty of time to talk. Absolutely. Who's presenting for the town tonight? Uh, that gave the engineer, right? Okay. Yeah. And he needs some questions answered? Uh, well, I mean, if he wants to, I'm sure we have a lot of technical questions yeah, for him. I, yeah. I don't know anything about the square footage That's, or anything could, like could, that. So. Todd, could no, you come up yeah. and just state your name for the record? Todd Gammon, uh, Blaze Civil Engineers. So the application, I can't speak to any of the applications, talk to James about that. I was just asked to provide the plan. So there is a stamp boundary survey and it is 1.39 acres. Everything's pinned. He went back out and hit a couple of pins that weren't placed. If you're standing uh, on Sullivan looking at the property on the to the right, the fence line to the left is along the property. It, it meanders a little bit, for, but for the most part, uh, along the Sheldons, it's directly on the property line. When um, was that survey completed? I'd have to look back. Is it recorded? 19. Yeah, there What's is that? a statement on the plan that was submitted that the survey was a survey was done. Is um, it recorded? Is there a reference to a recording? Oh, there's in the nothing recorded. No. July of 2019. I mean, I, I just think going forward, if this is going to become a town piece of land that we're going to do more things on it, I mean, we ought to start off with a boundary survey to, to make sure that we have whatever we have there because we bought it and that, in fact, the pins are all accounted for. I think Tom at a meeting had re made reference to many pins out there. So let's tie them all together and let's get the plan recorded. And I think even Tom mentioned you were going to re you were going to do the boundary survey when he spoke at one of the earlier meetings. So the boundary survey should be a recorded document because it's going to be used in the future going forward with whatever the town decides to put on that site. Mm -hmm. And the only other question I had is I, I looked at the, the deed there and there's an Ann Newcomb, I believe is the name, and there's a driveway. It, you, have a, you have on your checklist here that there is a deed restriction. You say existing restrictions and easements and you've checked that off in the application. 
If you read that in that, that D that's provided, there's an, I believe it's Ann Newcomb. There's a common driveway. Amelia Newcomb. Amelia yes. Newcomb. There's a common driveway, and I don't see that showing up anywhere. And that was recorded, so that should be showing up on a boundary plan as too. Any, any easements like that. Now, whether that can be changed because there's no longer a common drive there, I don't know, but I think we at least ought to start out with an accurate depiction of the property. And there is a recorded plan for Amelia Newcomb. Amelia which Newcomb, is, yes. Yeah, which is um, referenced in this deed that could be pulled to find. Yeah, well, let somebody check the box. So, I mean, I just, what is that restriction? And is, is that the, what we're referring to, that Newcomb one? Um, from from my research, yeah. nothing you folks have seen at this point. From my research, that is on the um, stamped survey plan. It was a five foot to 10 foot driveway that existed between the boundary of this property and the other boundary. There is a note on that plan. Um, I'm in hopes that you're going to get a copy of that plan um, that indicates that there needs to be um, basically rectification. Oh, is that a word? Rectification? Rectifying the boundary line with the abutter. Well, the other thing is if you read it, it's also, it passes on, it's assignable. Correct. I mean, so it, it can live there in perpetuity until you do remedy it. If Correct. That, if it needs I to be remedied. Read it this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So all that is on. We have a stamp boundary survey with the pins, with all the deed references. Everything's everything's okay. on there. Just just to answer the question for the attorney for Mrs. Sheldon, on the original plan that she had got, the there was. Uh, uh, concrete blocks or granite blocks that were going into the swale there. But then on the plan that we have now, they're gone. Yeah, they're in the middle. Yeah. So originally, so I've been involved in this for about three weeks, just so you know. Yeah. So we went out and counted the blocks, and I just asked the town, I asked the town manager, James, how do you want to actually delineate the parking spaces? I didn't think it was that, uh, didn't seem that appealing to go out every spring and put stakes up. So we were trying to think of, we they said they wanted to relocate the driveway, which I did. We wanted to um, be a certain distance off with the, with the seed, remove some of the impervious areas. Um, so I literally counted blocks. So to delineate the main line, we had double bay parking on each side, left and right, looped it around, got 68 parking spaces. And then the grass edge, we'd remove impervious, place loam and seed so that it'll delineate the parking on those edges. So a combination of the blocks, and that was essentially just to keep the expenses low. I was informed that I said, if you're not gonna pave it and you're not gonna stripe it, we gotta be a little creative here. Mm -hmm. So originally, the thought was we could take excess blocks, place them, treat it like a uh, essentially a granite berm, put some gravel between it. I, um, after discussing with them, I kinda nixed the idea and just put a, a graded swale down through there because they didn't have enough blocks to do that. Okay. So we use those to delineate the parking. So there's only a small amount of actual surface runoff that heads towards the house, and it's shown on the topographic plan, which is on the site plan. So I've just um, shown a swale going up to that. I can't speak to the geologic or geotechnical conditions. I don't know anything about the soils. Okay. Are there any waivers being requested? There's a whole bunch of them. Well, again, my memo indicates that um, those items were not requested are not checked off on the box. The issue that James brought, brought to me was that um, those required items were under site plan review, but if you look at just the conditional use, if it's determined that conditional use is what this is reviewed as, um, many of those items were not required to be um, So we submitted. haven't officially determined that their site plan review is not required. From my standpoint, it's conditional use. It is not site plan review. Okay. So those would not be required because that's, that that's why that's why on the application the that waivers is correct. aren't listed. The, the problem I, even I ran into is the way the application is set up. It's not clear where um, the requirements for conditional use stop and the site plan review requirements stop. I filled out this application. I think James's <laughs> signature is on it. It's so. better than your last it's one. Upgraded, it's, it's upgraded. It's great. Yeah, it looks great. Um, but I know that we were looking to, to see an up, 
updated plan? Is that what we, what I heard you saying? An updated plan with well, the this, old Well, this footprint? plan that you have in front of you yeah. tonight. No, is, the, the footprint oh, of the uh, old building. Yes. The old building. I mean, yeah, what was there we, before. Yeah. If we could get that plan, that's at least a conditions. starting point to yeah. start doing some of the math on the metrics that you have to look at. And you folks shouldn't have to do the math. The applicant should be provided. Exactly. And we're not going to act on this this evening anyway. The only thing that would yeah. be acted on it tonight would be a site walk. So uh, I, I know I wanted to. If you want to come back up, do you have any other I have anything? A question too. Come, come back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Again, Sarah McDaniel, attorney for Louisa Sheldon. Um, a, a couple of quick things. Uh, first, I just have to take offense to the. Um, uh, in three weeks, you would have no way of knowing. Uh, to say there's a small amount of runoff issue going on there is um, completely unconnected to reality. There's been a long history of runoff is issues with the prior use, and those have gotten worse as the demolition and this haphazard parking situation has happened. So there's a lot going on there, and nobody knows about the soils. And this is what exactly what we need to do, is to know what is the soil situation there, how is the surface water and the groundwater flowing and impacting the neighbor's house, and how is this new parking lot going to do that and how can we design that parking lot so that it doesn't damage her home. So that's a very important thing. On the site plan issue, um, we were all looking at pages, uh, section 9.8, uh, pages 111 and 112 on some of our ordinance copies anyway. Um, and again, the, uh, the issue for the site plan, the pre-existing use, the prior use was the sober home. It was a sober home and it had a 22 approved for 22 spaces parking lot. I can tell you because the type of work that I do when I, I help people with these cases is I come down to the town hall and I say I'd like to see the property file. I wanted to see what was the prior existing use. I wanted to see that plan and I spent a fairly long morning down here with James and um, some of the application materials were there but no plan of this parking lot could be found. Now again, that's not our fault. Uh, the town, you know, that's in, I would hope that but there was a plan. A plan. There's a plan now. No, the previous no, I'm talking plan. about the, the Sober Homes plan. Oh, I Sober Home with its 22 parking lot and where the building was, right. I have not seen a plan. I came here with the goal of trying to find that plan, and I could not find it, and, and James could not at that time find it. So it should be findable. Uh, and again, it's on the applicant. Uh, normally, the applicant would be the job to find it. Of course, the town would should have those records. Um, but I just wanted to make sure you're aware of the fact that that seems to not be available right now. Uh, that doesn't mean that we have as the neighbors should suffer because the town as the record holder and the town as the applicant haven't have failed to provide that information to you but that's something that I just wanted to make sure you knew that there may be difficulty finding that so then as a board you're going to have to figure out how to move forward without that or what to ask them to do aerial photographs how those things can be put onto surveys to figure out what the existing condition was but again when you're having the existing condition these surveyors came the surveyors came out I have not seen this boundary survey I was I thought it was going to be in the application materials I was surprised when it was not because I was told they were doing that um, but I don't know whether it even purports to try to show existing conditions or if it is just a boundary survey and if it shows existing conditions that begs the question what are the existing conditions in terms of legal permitting the existing conditions that it should be showing are do I have to go all the way back to 2017 or just fall of 2018? The house with the, the sober house with the 22 parking spaces. That was the old use. Then the town became owner of the property and it was changing from that use. It demolished the house and its new use is a community parking facility. They have a nice label on their conditional use application, community parking facility. When you look at your table of uses, parking facility is its own little row. That's a different use than sober house. So when we're looking back on page 111, um, a, a use which may not be changed to another conditional use. And so they're going from one conditional use sober home to a new conditional use parking facility. And that's why you do have to apply all the ordinance conditions. And um, again, if they're doing 5,000 or more square feet of impervious surface compared to sober home with its 22 lots, I, I think that they may very well be because right now what's happened over the last six months, they've been using that unpermitted, uh, even though I understand I wasn't at this meeting, but I understand the planning board said, you're, you have no permit, you're not supposed to use it. Nevertheless, they've been using it. They even have a sign saying parking for recreational use only. That's not even pretending to not use it. These nice granite blocks that they put out there, they could have blocked the driveway, but no, they're encouraging and they're allowing this use to continue with the gravel that's sort of been pulled together in a haphazard way. They've been grading. They're already working just this last week, some of the grading in the area. Oh, excuse me. 
uh, some of the grading in the area of um, thank you of Ms. Sheldon's home. Uh, again, I'm glad we're going to have a site visit, but again, when you see a site visit, it's a construction site. I'll just site. say that the town of Berwick continued to use it because going off of what the town planner had said that 22 spaces could still be used in that area, and that is what the town decided to go with, that since there's already permitted for 22 spaces, even though we objected, but we went, you know, he's got a planning degree. And that's what the town went off of. I appreciate that, and I understand that the planning board is not the enforcement entity here, but in terms of being the neighbor, when the landowner who's next door to you is the town that's hurting you, it, it feels pretty bad. And so when you're going through these applications and trying to see, you know, what does a landowner have to prove to you to show that they're meeting these standards, uh, this landowner really should be held to a high standard because they're the town and because they've already been skirting the issues again. Using the, using the existing 22 parking spaces is very different than being out there and doing construction and doing grading. How can we figure out what the impact is going to be on that groundwater when they're doing grading changes already? Are the grading changes that they propose going to be effective? Well, we don't know that. Again, you know, we think that it's the onus on the landowner to provide that information. Um, and like I said, I do believe that a site plan review level of review is required, and certainly even if it's not, then there's still, with a conditional use, they should be allowed should be required to provide those information so that you can fully assess that background. Um, I wanted to get those points out. All right, thank you. Thank you. Lee J, could we have somebody through Southern Maine Planning and Engineer that you have there take a look at this plan, just a third party, a neutral third party? Um, we do not employ an engineer, but I can certainly contact um, a number of different civil engineering firms that could do a third-party review for you, yes. Because I think it would be important as to have a, not, not to take anything away from the engineer that the town has hired, but just to have a neutral third party to say, look, somebody else looked at this, and this is, especially when it comes to dealing with the stormwater and the drainage mm -hmm. and the grading, that is important. That's what, I mean, that's what you've been here complaining about. Yeah. Fifty percent of your well, complaints is about your, your basement and the others is other Yeah. My comment slash question for the, the town is why did we, we have a, a redesign? Why are we still shedding the surface water towards this house? Why are we we have an opportunity to regrade this. It's obvious it's being regraded. It's gonna be regraded. Why would it why would we continue to show the water going that direction? It's that not. makes that makes no sense. That. Sure, Steve. Well, this plan, Steve, this plan is showing the surface water shedding towards that house. Yeah, there's squiggly lines. I can't speak. <laughs> I'm not an engineer. I'm not sure what I want to be. Um, <laughs> the work that was done up there today, uh, they've been hauling material in between the fence, which is our line, and probably 20 plus feet away from the line to provide the pitch it so it's going away from that property. They also have come in and they put topsoil in and plan on seeding it um, so it will create uh, a better you know, pervious area. So that's what we've been doing. I, we haven't followed the plan and I don't know what they did for grading but what I saw was just a skim. It didn't really do anything to pitch the water away from the, or towards her property. Uh, well, I know, but the, this plan is still shows mm -hmm. surface water draining towards the property. Uh, I would think that that would be that, that's that would be a major issue that yeah, we yeah, would be would trying to correct. Be. So, I've got a surface swale prior to her property. Yeah. I mean, other than I was basically told to not not to uh, change any of the topography at all, that we're just going to lay out a parking place. Okay. So that's essentially, I got the survey done, had the boundary, put the pins in. We have all the notes. It's a, it's a stamped PLS plan. He gave me the CAD file. I looked at the CAD file and basically laid out 68 pa spaces to see if it could fit, ultimately. And then how were we going to creatively delineate the parking lot without grading anything, without changing anything topographically? And the only thing that I ultimately could do is if there was any prior curbing there to the left with the prior building is put a, I mean, a surface swale serves the same function as a curb. It's actually redirecting the flow down to the Sullivan Street paved swale. Yeah. If you look at that. No, I, I understand that. Slope, so. I understand that. It's, you're, it's, you know, we're sending it down onto the driveway. Sure. Mm -hmm. So it's not how going to our house. Deep, how deep is that swale? I'd have I can't to look read at that. Point. I think it's a 5% slope. 
so there's actually a natural back berm if you if uh, I can see in the topographic plan that I mean I can't imagine it picks up that much steam it's not that much area generally speaking um, but most I'm gonna say almost 8,000 square feet of gravel is converted into loam and seed I can't speak to the prior conditions in years past but from this existing condition which somebody had a question about the existing conditions the plan they provided is a stamp boundary it's an existing condition it shows every square foot of gravel every square foot of grass it shows the topography and right down to the limits of the length and width of all the blocks that we could move so everything's very detailed on the plan so i took that and created those 68 spaces i wanted to have at least two-way traffic for safety and then asked how you want to delineate the spaces if we're not going to grade anything pave anything or stripe anything so we thought we'd uh, make use of those granite blocks so yeah, no, and it's that's, not like that's we're going to put curb I'm on gravel so we're trying to be a little creative so a surface whale should act fine i feel like some of the conversation is more about hydrogeologic groundwater flow maybe more yeah. than and well and if i mean if this is if this is the direction that you guys were given that's fine that, that's yeah. Yeah. understandable i guess my question is why were you guys given this direction to continue shedding water towards that property. I understand we have a swale, I understand all that. It's being redirected to Sullivan, so, I mean, if the swale picks it up, it can't get to the house. Whether you put a curb there or a swale or intercept it with an underdrain, there's all kinds of ways to intercept it. So we weren't gonna, uh, you know, recontour the whole parking lot. What you know? would be involved in, in doing the proper engineered plan, uh, drainage calculations, et cetera, to address what Sean's raising. I mean, it seems to me we've been called out tonight about not following our own ordinances, and thank you, John, for straightening that out for us. But um, we are, if we need to follow our own ordinances and move forward, then I think we should have an engineered parking lot here mm -hmm. um, and not just try to make it work with what, picking it up off the edge and catching it in a swale. It should be engineered. Yeah, Mrs. Sheldon has been here, or Ms. Sheldon has been here numerous times for public comments, and it's cause the the water runoff the way it is is causing damage to her basement, and there's no there's no saying that this swale is going to stop that. So I I would want to see that too. If I if I would want the town to be a good neighbor if they were moving in next to me and and to do the good thing too. So um. and just to continue on with that, I I thank Attorney McDaniel. Um, I hadn't looked at the metrics in a while for, you know, head-end parking and aisle width and stuff. And mm -hmm. if the metrics are wrong and they don't meet our ordinance, then there has to be a level of engineering in to make the metrics They work. certainly don't. The 16-foot spaces in the center are two feet short of uh, what our parking ordinance is. Yeah, those so spaces shown be, are 9 by 18. Yeah, so those are 18. Well, 16 spaces on each side. Oh, that's, it's six, 16 oh I thought it was 16 feet. I was yeah, like, no. okay. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of land, and we removed okay. almost yeah, 8,000. 18 and a half is what it should the, be. It, it would be pretty simple to add a half a foot okay. to land. Yeah. I mean, obviously, <laughs> they're actually the reducing swales, actually. the amount of land. There. In, in, in why 68 spaces? How, how did that number come about? That's just how it laid. They, I think okay. they originally asked for almost 70. And then they wanted to keep the uh, top area open for emergency vehicles only. And I thought potentially there'd be a sign there someday, but I hadn't discussed it with them. So, I mean, I think part of the, I did see what was submitted by the neighbor before. I'm not sure if we're talking about a surface water issue or a subsurface hydrogeologic issue getting to their foundation drain. That's a whole different conversation. I can't speak to, I mean, that bill, I don't know how long the sober house has been there. But if you eliminate the house roof impervious, all that water flowed off the roof and got into the ground. If there was any impervious area, it's still, you know, gravel is a little more pervious than pavement. Do the abutters have sump pumps? Do you have a sump pump? I don't need a sump pump. I, I'm just asking. I have do, perimeter do, drains around the house okay. that were designed. The plan and the excavation we did in 1992 was designed by Keith Kahlberg of Roaring Brook Associates and it never went wrong until this curb was removed. Actually, only once before when the town crushed. Oh yeah, you should be speaking in the microphone. Exit. It was, what was the question? I asked if you had a sump pump and you were explaining no. that you have no, a perimeter sir. drain that must have a free flowing outfall Correct. somewhere. Correct, the clean water drains go under the driveway 
the one in the driveway actually filled in with um, whatever needed to be replaced in 2017. We replaced that, checked the rest of them around the house. They're all hollow. They're flowing. There's nothing wrong with them. So there's nothing wrong with our drains. But the design plan for the excavation that we did in 1992 was, was done by Keith Kahlberg of Roaring Brook Associates. A guy's got an MIT degree. We did everything perfect. And we had no problems until an incident that crushed our exit drain at the street. That was repaired. That was in 2001. And when they began to remove the curbing, June 18th, 2018, the day they came and uh, excavated, actually tore up the curbing and cracked our foundation on June 18th of last year. That's when we began to see water coming in, not from the walls. It's coming in at the base. The seepage is soaking up through the pad, just as in a letter that Keith Kahlberg, I gave to the town. He mentioned that in there that we would have no problems unless groundwater recharge was happening quickly. So my side cannot absorb everything that is flowing from that property and also into the ground in that vicinity. Okay. All right. I think pretty much everybody on the board agrees that there needs to be some type of engineer plan to address this. We need to right. do the due diligence. I don't want to see the town have to spend any more money than it has to, but this is an issue that's not going to go away. We need to do the due diligence to make sure that we have a different type of plan. Not not to critique your plan at all. You were just doing you were just oh, told what you needed to do. Um, the, the only thing I'll mention, sorry, is I do think there's a big difference in what they're talking about with the, the subsurface water versus the surface water. That's going to be a different um, then if, plan, if plan the, of attack. If you, I mean, I've, I've done drainage for 24 years and worked. If your plan comes back with drainage right. and it shows that the, engine, that the plan is engineered that way and we agree on it and, we, and, and the, the third party looks at it and then we sign off on it and we approve the application, if there's still problems, then... The challenge will be is that I, I think the finished grade of their driveway is almost 10 feet below the, the ground and has been for likely 40 years. So that's where the water goes. If any water seeps into the ground, it's likely heads there. So if she has a perforated pipe around her foundation drain, which we install all the time, if that's been TV'd and it's hollow and it's raining, and, and there, there's not, I mean, we jet those all the time too. They do get filled with silt and they get crushed. And if those get fill up and you get cracks in your basement that happens over time, you're going to get water in your basement, especially if you're at the low point. Right. So I just want to see. I just want to see a plan come back here that shows that, that this parking lot was built to the, the best standards to not encringe on that abutting property, and then that's what we go off of. Uh, we're not going to be able to do anything here within the next couple of weeks because I really want to reserve the time for the site walk for the first meeting that we have in September. I think we should have a site walk on September 19th. At, at this and that would give the town plenty of time to come back with a different plan give you another some more time yeah. to come back with another plan yeah and I'm just and I'm not saying that they're I'm sure they are seeing water I just want to make sure that we don't co come back multiple towns if the town wants me to look at something more and, yeah. and get a little more detail with the design you would almost need to probably put a cutoff trench there and do some exactly. draining right I, I know how to stop the subsurface flow but I we weren't asked to do but that. But I don't so. think it ever got into the subsurface. If it was if it was curbed and that, that sheet flow came over and it was picked up on, it immediately went to the ditch line. Potentially, yeah. So and now it's going up against her back. house, and if it's a wintertime condition where she's got a heated basement, it's going to find itself and it's going to go down. And that four-inch perforated pipe around the perimeter that's laid flat. Well, that's what I mentioned, which was some of the argument earlier. sounded like they wanted to go back to impervious with curbs to ensure that it goes out to Sullivan. So if it's all gravel, then there's potential it's going to infiltrate more. But the sober house also had quite a bit of grass behind there as well. So there was still water that got in there. If we could, do you know where your pipe outlets to the ditch? Yeah. If you could stick a stake in the ground before we go out for the site walk. Um, I'm sorry, what, what pipe outlets? You're talking about your perimeter drain that comes by? They go into the city basin that you guys want to drain more water into. That's what it, they're built it, underground. So under it, it ties into the storm drain system. It doesn't right. go into an open ditch. No, sir. Okay. No. It goes underground into the, uh, <clears throat> the catch basin catch system. system. Yeah, she's got a catch basin right in front of her house. And the pipe, can you see the pipe? I've never looked in it, but. You can see it, and I can show it yeah, to you. Yeah, that's what we like well, to look at it. We did investigate that. They're not filled in. We took extra measures because yeah. we actually did 
an old fashioned type deal first, which failed. So the second time around, I wasn't fooling around. I got an engineer to design it. I had uh, excavators from from South Berwick do the work, and in between, Keith Kahlberg came to check the job as we were doing it. The walls were epoxy, bitchathene and mirror drain were pasted to them. I have not given you pictures. I will present those pictures next time around. Okay, let's do a site walk on September 19th, James, and then that'll give- At 5.30? At 5.30, sure, yep. And then that will give us plenty of time to, um, for you to work on the other plans for this, so we can make sure that we are, um, good to go on this. So, and then we'll have the, we'll continue the public hearing. So we're going to move on from this now. Continued? The, con public the public hearing, hearing is continued. It's still open? Mm -hmm. We never closed it. We never closed it. We're going to, so that, that, that makes sense to everybody, what we're doing here? Okay. Um, <clears throat> where are we here? Um, Mr. Chairman, if you could take five for the next one. So the screen can be brought down. Well, I, I had a couple of questions, oh, too. Oh, sorry. Still. Yes. On, I mean, it was funny because reading Attorney McDaniel's letter, or summary page here, I'm reading down my notes, hours of opera. I mean, I got everything right. Lighting. I got, I got all my notes that I put down. And I would think we would need a little more comprehensive narrative on this to delineate whether this is a year-round or a seasonal parking facility. Um, the hours that it's open. Is it going to be secured? Is it going to be posted so there's no nighttime parking, overnight parking? I mean, all those things I think need to be addressed. If it's year round, how are we dealing with plowing it and maintaining it? Um, I don't know if it's part of a much bigger uh, parking facility because discussions over the last year, year and a half have gone to possibly using that as a park and ride type of a, of, a, of a lot. I mean, might be scuttlebutt on the street, but it's been said. Um, because the coast bus goes up, it turns at the fork in the road and comes back down, so it could easily be accommodating to a park and ride. Um, I would also want to know if it's a park and, if it becomes a park and ride, that it's by permit, there's fees associated with it. Um, the funds would go towards the recreational account, anything that's raised in, in fees for that. And the big thing would be to go talk to the, uh, the gentleman down at the uh, Portsmouth Navy Shipyard in the uh, transportation in incentive program down there. The applicant should be talking to them because we know the coast ridership subsidizes half the cost of these guys to park in town. Maybe the federal government will subsidize half the fees to paying to park there on a day-to-day -day basis. In Portsmouth, I paid $80 a month. I know, we're get, really getting in the weeds on this. But I, I paid no, $80 I, 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 a month, yeah. and it, no, no one ever balked an eye, you know? So but I do, I do agree with you, at least on the plans, there needs to be hours of operation. It's a th I know it's right. gonna be 365 day operation, yep. but it's, it, needs to, it needs to at least have the hours of operation, and that's something that you're but gonna I would decide. Just think I, would, I would think 6 a.m. to dusk, right? If there's a it, bigger it, picture, it, we it, can know it. I, I, I got up specifically to talk about the Coast Bus and the Park and Ride. Um, I'm, I'm one of the directors on Coast I, Bus I know now. That, Tom. And uh, they, we're actually looking at changing the route and no longer going up there. As I talked to them initially about using that for Park and Ride, and they don't like that idea. They don't want to be up there. So is uh, more than likely the Coast is not going to be continuing up that way. They're going to come up here and take a right on to Wilson Street and continue around that way. So it won't be a Park and Ride you know, for Coast or for the for the Navy Yard probably. Um, so that could be a condition? <clears throat> I don't care. Okay. Is, uh, um, is, as far as is, there's no plans to plow it in the wintertime, um, you know, uh, we don't currently plow the other parking lot for the recreation field, is we actually use it as a snow dump. Mm -hmm. is, um, so is, uh, there's no plan for using it year round. We don't plan on plowing it. Um, I agree with the uh, no hours of operation, no overnight parking, that's not a problem. Is uh, we have that similar to the uh, parking lot on the corner of Wilson Street right now, is um, so. Is it, it going to be gated or not? No, there will be no gates. Is um, is uh, you know same as the other parking lot on the other side. It's going to be you know open. So, 
maybe a condition that we don't dump snow in that parking lot since we already have problems with right. water and drainage. Right. I mean, we weren't planning on it, you know. Well, especially, we don't plan on a lot of but, things, well, and they especially, still happen. especially if we have the granite, you no know, curbing in the middle of it. You yeah. know, it makes it difficult, you know, for moving snow and stuff. So, no, we don't have have plans on doing any of that. But just just to continue along, because they are using temporarily that um, prime par property over on the corner, correct? They're parking there and they're commuting yes. in. Um, in your discussions with Coast Tom, can you talk about dealing with with a park and ride in Berwick somewhere? Um, can we do it at another time? Is, well, no, but what I'm saying, but is, is, don't don't is lose sight I, of this because it's a it's a big issue. Oh no, no, we've, we we've, know no, the, the selectmen have talked about it also. No, no, and, I just think we're getting really in the weeds here. We still have a lot of stuff right, to, exactly. to cover. No, here. I, I, I wanted I, to talk I, about the you know these are conditions. these are really good topics to bring up here, especially to think about long term of the parking because we will eventually be losing that parking lot there um, on Wilson Street, but. It's really getting in the weeds right now, so I think we should. Uh, Can I say one more thing? I, I'd really like to move along. Okay. We're, we're leaving a public comment session. No, Moving on to the next on the agenda here. We're done talking about this right now. We're done moving. We're done moving. We're done. We're done talking. Okay. Thank you very much. Moving on next in the agenda. Conditional use application, public facility, fire department. The address is 20 Wilson Street. The map is U4. Lot 142-1, the applicant is the town of Berwick. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, we need a short break here. I gotta get up. Take care of that. <sighs> let it fly back up. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, he's experienced. That's because he watched me do it last time. Oh, no, you weren't here. I want it to light now. <laughs> <laughs> we all moving out of the way? Yeah. 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 I'm going to stand up. I need yeah. to make sure every T is crossed. Yeah. Every I is drawn. Oh, I, I need to stand <laughs> up. Me too. Squeeze in here. Yep. Thank you, Kevin. You certainly can. Okay. Oh, I mean, the sounds of it were doing a site plan. I cleared the room. I mean, that's, is there right? I mean, it's like more of a <laughs> water. So we just found the water. 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 Uh, yes, so Mr. Chairman, I no. will be brief on this because I have not provided any new memos. New, no new additional information has been provided on oh, this. Oh yeah, hold on, we're waiting on Nicole. Oh. I know, right? Said five minutes. <laughs> Always holding things up. <laughs> oh, nice. In the back. You won't lift the hood. You can't We need one for Nicole here. Too exciting, planning more meetings in a row. You need one for Nicole. Nicole, Nicole one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll share. It shouldn't take long. All right, she's back. Continue. Oh, this is the last one. Oh, Nicole's over there. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Ready? Sorry. Okay, so. Um, again, no new additional information was submitted. No new additional information has been provided by me to you. The application was tabled at the last meeting um, to continue discussions on the issues relevant to the site. Um, most importantly, as we know, uh, a lot of the discussion with the planning board at the last meeting surrounded an issue of the um, public access and that's where the discussion was left. So I will turn it over to the applicant and let them do their thing. Sure. All set? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So uh, my name's Andy Highland. I'm uh, at Port City Architecture. We're the uh, architects for the project. So I just wanted to kind of start, kind of just bring everybody back to kind of how we got to where we were. We were initially, initially looking at uh, Cemetery Road, and the town voted to uh, locate the fire station with the police station at, at, uh, at the old Estabrook school site. So we took a look at it and here's the existing police station was here. Public access comes in from Wilson Street and from School Street. So we d and there's parking area here. 
So we decided to maintain public access to the to the site and uh, kind of create a public safety complex. So this is the public access and parking to the police station. So we located the fire station right beside it, and that would be the uh, the public access to the fire and police station. When we we do a lot of fire stations, when we when we uh, design them, we try to really kind of keep a balance between the public and the private. Uh, access to the site for safety considerations. One thing that we really avoid, if we can avoid it at all costs, is to have apparatus run through any kind of parking area. That's a very dangerous situation if people are backing out of parking spaces and the, and the public is, is in the area when an apparatus is called on an emergency call. So what we looked at and the, talked to the chief, he needed to get to two sides of the town. He needed to get out access to Sullivan, and he needed to get access out to School Street. So Logan Street up here, uh, there was no way the apparatus could make the turns. It's a windy road to get to Sullivan. So that's how we uh, decided to go ahead and uh, see if we could use, and the DEP would allow us to use the old, it was a little school walking trail that was filled and kind of put right through the wetlands here because that was really our only opportunity to get out to Sullivan Street. We, didn't, we couldn't go down Wilson. That's not really a safe. That's the public access to the site. So that's kind of where we uh, headed with the design. And we designed the, originally it was square. We designed kind of a 45 degree building and to try to minimize the amount of impervious that we had. This would have had a double-sided uh, uh, access. So what we were planning on was this whole side here would be kind of the business side. This is where the call company uh, firefighters are going to park. They have access right in a side door to their turnout gear, get to the apparatus, and either come down uh, the new access road to Sullivan Street or up into Logan Street. So that's kind of, that was just kind of the basic, and there's really not too many ways if you're going to locate it. This is really the only kind of conceivable way that we figured uh, that you could really locate the fire station here. Police are a little bit different. They're not in the station waiting on calls. Uh, we, we're at, in this uh, plan here also adding, it's a small piece for the police station, but we're turning the old gym into a sally port. So we've added a little driveway in the back here. They'll just park cruisers. I think they can get maybe six in there at a time. Uh, and, and, and added a small uh, shower area and kind of a car maintenance or cruiser maintenance area. And that has a, a driveway out here. Again, they're not going to be uh, screaming out of the driveway. It's really just to keep cars. They're not going to go on calls you know, from the Sally Port. It's just really more of a storage area. So that's public side, public access, private side, private access. So this is uh, so this is taking a look at it. Uh, so this is uh, and, and kind of what we were planning to do. So public access is coming up Wilson. We're creating a, a sidewalk up to the front door here, a plaza. We'll probably uh, have a memorial, also firefighters memorial at the flagpole here, creating and then a sidewalk connection across, and we're uh, doing a nicer entrance on the police station as well. Here's kind of the existing condition as it stands now. The police station's front door continues to be where it is. It's not very well marked. Uh, this is just kind of some old siding, broken windows uh, in the gym at the, at, the, at the old school. So this is what we're planning to uh, uh, brick in the end, uh, put in a small garage door. And this is really the public access and public view to the whole site. We're going to pick up uh, from the old the historic uh, bell that's at the existing fire station, create a bell tower here. Again, this is, uh, this is the uh, apparatus that are going to exit through the site. I get up and out here. <clears throat> Looking at it kind of in a 3D plan. Uh, training tower on the end. Oops, yeah, if I don't, sorry, I don't want to make everybody too dizzy here. Yeah, yeah, we are definitely off the planet right now. 
Uh, so this is a training tower. These are additional uh, drive-through bays for the apparatus. Uh, this is the back door then of the gym. Again, it's really kind of just to park cruisers, keep them out of the weather. And, and maybe if they bring somebody in for a booking, it's a secure area that they can close the garage doors and we have a booking area uh, right off of the, of, the, of the apparatus bay. So that's uh, kind of it in a nutshell. Let me see if I can get back to scene one. Ooh, there we go. <clears throat> and of the plan, uh, Todd's here. He's uh, our civil engineer from Blaze. If you want to talk about site drainage, anything else on the on the site that uh, uh, that we we are proposing, I'll get his plan up here. Here's uh, Todd Gammon from Blaze Engineering. So I think we covered. Uh most of it in the last meeting, but as Andy mentioned, the access off Sullivan, Sorry. Uh, maintaining the culverts. Okay. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest thing that jumps out is to the uh, to the south. That's a uh, MDEP design filter. Okay. Uh, some challenging uh, topography across the site. Got a 20 foot road entrance off Sullivan. Uh, back mid slopes on each. That is an MDEP stream in gray. So this, yeah, this piece here is a stream that we're going through. So, you know, one of the things as we talk about the, the trails that I wanted to mention is there is a requirement for a 25-foot setback because there is an MDEP stream out there. So it's not just an impervious increase from Sullivan. Right now, to get the two-way traffic, we're showing, we're trying to minimize impervious as best we can. It's 20 foot wide. The turning template works for the fire trucks to access around the building and also to turn out of the building and to turn right back through the parking lot to get up to Logan and or exit through Sullivan. I was told after the fire, the majority of the trucks will come back in through Sullivan. But um, that is one of the design constraints. Uh, when you look at that gray stream, we've got a swale that circumnavigates most of the parking lot, barely have 25 foot setback from that stream. Um, challenging constraints, challenging slope back up to Logan. Uh, based on the geotechnical report, we have a four-foot cutoff trench. It was a fully underdrained trench, fabric wrapped on all sides of the uh, parking lot to ensure the water doesn't get under the, the heavy-duty pavement, have any frost heaving implications in the future. Um, all the utilities come off Sullivan, sewer, water, uh, underground electric. Uh, right Am I, going I think the it's, right direction? Nope, the other way. Wait, that's it before? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, so there's a site layout. You can see the, trying to limit the amount of clearing as well. You can see the proposed tree line and a uh, gentleman referred to it earlier. There is a little over 10,000 square feet of uh, wetland impact, mainly from the entrance off Sullivan. We have uh, an Army Corps permit, DEP stormwater permit, DEP NRPA tier one, and um, also any work within 75 feet of a resource requires a DEP permit. So there's uh, about four things in progress right now with the state and the Army Corps. Um, so trying to limit the amount of tree clearing, uh, wetlands, and, and all the rest, and some of the setback requirements, that makes it challenging. We have seven, I believe it's seven light poles. We have a riser pole coming in uh, off Sullivan. We've obviously widened that entrance. And then we're going to have three light poles along the uh, the main entrance. There's a few at the parking lot. There's one out behind the building. It's on the electrical plan. Yeah, and, and then there's a couple up. There's one up off uh, Logan. So. Uh, the, the piece of property that town just bought there? On the right yep. If you go down, you can see it uh, right there, Andy, through the road and up to the top. Yeah. This piece right here. That piece right there. Yeah, yeah. About a, about a third of an acre. As to allow us to get out to Sullivan Street and uh, and clear the existing telephone pole that's there and make safe turns uh, onto Sullivan. There's also a plan to uh, we're working with the fire department on a some sort of a notification system that will slow or stop traffic on Sullivan Street as they come out. They have some systems on their truck now that we think we can use 
but there will be some sort of notification when you come out to Sullivan Street that either stops or warns traffic uh, that a, that a apparatus is coming out of this bay, and we'll cut this back as much as as much as we can uh, in the in the wetland area. Is there going to be a sign there in Sullivan Street that says fire fire department? Absolutely, and and then also a sign that we're working on the system that we're going to use, but it'll be a sign that actually flashes red stop or, you know, some sort of notification that actually gives them a stop sign to uh, when, when apparatus are coming through. So that's, that's, we're looking at a couple different systems, but, but I think that's important on the Sullivan Street portion. There's a couple of school zone flashers on Sullivan. Yeah. They thought we could potentially retrofit those. So as Todd said, all the utilities are coming, electrics coming up. Uh, this is the transformer, and we're putting the new generator out here. This is all coming into the building. Water service, uh, water riser, sprinkler riser is in here. Uh, sewer is coming down. So they're all going to work into the, the widening of that trail uh, and, uh, and into the side of the bankment, all the underground utilities going out. Uh, out of the... Uh, Apparatus bays, we have uh, uh, linear trench drains. They all are going to flow into this uh, uh, oil water separator and then into the uh, sanitary sewer system as well. Okay. Other things you wanted to go yeah, over? Yeah, and then just a little work around the police station, essentially, uh, just to get to that Sally Port in and out, a little bit of the uh, walkways in front, but that's uh, we you know, tried hard to really limit the uh, the uh, disturbance in the impervious areas on the on the site to make use of uh, some of the cuts and uh, some of the better granular barrows and, and gravels and whatnot in the cut fill balancing right. the site that we've been dealing with the contractors. We had to widen up the uh, and cut the the. Uh, grade back uh, to get apparatus around the back here so it's will be a steep grade up uh, to where the old school section did was. that utility plan still show the water separator the uh, oil water separator before yeah. discharging yeah it's on the utility plan right there what? sorry okay. I'll, I'll zoom in and i remember you talked about trying to do something comparable over with the um, Sally Port area where they're going to be having the cruisers inside too. Have yeah, given that any thought? Not comparable. Hopefully, something more limited. I have a detail that I'm providing to the the sewer district for an internal OWS because we have the ability with the just with the inverts of the sewer. We're already ripping up the floor. I think we can do an internal one there. And they were verbally. I spoke with them. They're generally in agreement. So we did, we did find a sanitary sewer line. This was an old warming kitchen with some uh, 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 sinks and stuff over here. So there's a sanitary line that goes underneath here, and we found it, and there, there's a uh, kind of catch or sub little basement under this area. So we're going to dig that up. Put it uh, underneath uh, in in. So down in that vault area, there yeah. is a there is a sump that serves wastewater. Uh, the sump, this, it's a it's a, a stormwater sump, I think. Just a. But you said it came off of a kitchen area. Oh yeah, no, no. There's a, it's just a sanitary line. We missed it before. I didn't know that there was uh, drains on this side. So we had talked about maybe coming out the front, but we found a drain line that runs right underneath <gasps> where we're going. So we're going to tie into that one and, and put a, uh, a uh, oil water separator inside in the excavation there because we need to slope it down to a trench drain okay. when the cruisers come in for and you know snow and ice melts off them etc do you know where that sewer line actually goes you said you never found the end of it yes yeah no it it uh, runs uh, it's the main sewer it picks up the main sewer line and out into uh off, off to school street currently somewhere. everything goes into a tank and is pumped out of there correct no uh no they hooked it up i believe no gravity flows out of the tank yeah used to be the old septic tank used went to, to a leach be, field yeah. but it's it's all gravity i guess yeah. it's still in the line okay. but essentially a gravity flows out of that did you have the police uh, electrical too i can't remember where yeah that. it's on the uh two couple drawings down okay sorry let me try to get there okay. yeah oh here it is okay <clears throat> 
So the other one of the other things that we're going to need to do here is uh, the police stations right now fed through the former Estabrook School, the power. So we're going to relocate. We've had CMP out there. Uh, we're going to relocate from School Street, uh, drop the, uh, the electric underground. Also, their fiber that they need for their uh, 911 system is just kind of looped overhead. So we'll drop the fiber underground as well and uh, feed that through the attic and down to the uh, main disconnect panels. Right now, it comes through Esterbrook School. There's a little tunnel here, and then it comes up into the uh, main disconnect panels. So um, we'll refeed that. And that's a single phase. The new fire station will be three phase. So we're uh, keeping them both separate. We'll take the fire station's existing generator and use that for the police station and provide a new three phase a generator to run the fire station. I had an opportunity to be in the Esterbrook School over the over the end of the last week, and uh, I noticed some stakes out in the field and up on the side banks and mm -hmm. stuff. What are those stakes for? That's the water line coming in off of Logan. So it's okay. uh, it, so you've not staked anything out as far as where the footprint of this building goes. No. I don't know if they use stake for the water main. I'm not sure what. I, I haven't I haven't been down there. there. Which I thought yeah. was the footprint of the building. Yeah, I down, uh, down here, not that I, not that we you've down done, in you've this You've not area. staked anything out then. <clears throat> no, I haven't been out there. We haven't uh, asked anything to be staked. I'm not sure what there. Uh, yeah. And I think is that going to be a requirement before the site well, walk? It would be, be help, very helpful on a site walk. Yeah. But there's, who put those stakes there? Yeah, there's stakes. Where are those stakes from the uh, the uh, FW Coal? Well, there, there's test pits all through there, and but, maybe some stakes oh, yeah, you associated may be right. yeah. with that. That's the only thing that's down here, that at least let that last I saw, unless somebody's gone and put stakes in there since I was there. So, so what do we need to put on this drawing or on the site plan drawing, if you go back to that, that can show how this could be a trail hub? I'm, I'm talking just lines on paper now. Because there's been no indication of lines on paper I, of whether I have or an not. Idea. Do we have like a little red well, pointer? Okay. Exactly. James, get you to the site plan. I just had a suggestion, and if this could just, you know, and I know it comes down to money. I really do. I know it comes down to money, and like Frank said, or no, it was Dennis who said we can find the money in the in the rec plan. Eventually, but I'm not talking like a, a nice brick walkway or anything like that. Just I think the major sticking point is just going to be that accessibility. Number one, to not to not shut off the access. To like don't have a big sign up there that says don't come here. Obviously, I don't think Chief wants his guys let me see how if I know how this works. Here. Don't point it at your eyes. Don't point it at my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, see it. Don't, don't, oh. don't put it in the airplanes. Oh, here it is. Oh okay, yeah, here it is. Okay. I don't think that if I was the, the fire chief, I wouldn't want people walking back here behind your cars. I wouldn't want that. I think we need to stop that from here. But I think if you look coming in over here, there's access in between the building. Just don't shut the access off that way. And you can come up back behind here. That's going to be all grass. And then the other thing is coming in over here, this is going to be open with trees, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's you can see well, that's the, the line. that's the that's settling the basin open. there. Oh, that's yeah. going to be that's going to be the gonna filtering. Grass? That's going to be the filtering basin over there. So it's, it's going right to be here. an indented yeah. thing. Yeah, might want to look at the grading plan there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's so you you don't want to go that way. Yeah, you don't want to send them through the filter. All right. And then, and then you can come up Well, the ideal place is where you just mentioned between the buildings. My comment was. How do you get them from Sullivan through that driveway? And then over there to the rec field. Through where? Yeah, it's nothing but trees and wet is, here we wetlands. Go. All right. How do you go? How do you come from here to get over to here? Okay. I, think, I think you just use Wilson. Wilson Street is there really the way right now? Dave, like I had suggested, coming up Wilson and passing in front of the police station, and then up the this right hand side of the right. property up to Logan. So you would still have that. Well, you'd come this up. This would not be limited. You'd go up. You'd come up the far side here. I can get up and do it. <coughs> My thought was to come up here, somehow come, you know, come over this way, and then up and over. Which, 
you know, brings the people into the complex, but then keeps them, you know, out of the operating areas. So right now, there's no, there's no way feasible to have access this way. It's this was the big sticking point. All the way back to DEP. There's a well, we, when we did the workforce housing, if you look at one of their work plans that they did, we had them look at the prime site, and we also had them look at the Esterbrook site. And there was a drawing that showed, of course, at the time, this center part was going to be a commons, okay? Senior housing was going to be up on Logan Street. Esterbrook School was going to be used for additional housing or whatever. This was going to be a green spot. And they had a trail that kind of followed the main stream all the way around the, the periphery. And it seemed to work. I mean, true, there are permits and there are those kinds of things that you're going to have to run into. But we had a Eagle Boy Scout do the Penny Pond Trail as, a, as his project. I did. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, it seems to me if you've got some kids with some initiative and a reason we shouldn't rule out not having the ability to put a trail in there. And all, all I'm saying on a plan like this is to just designate a corridor, not necessarily build it, but prove to, prove to yourself that you could have a corridor there, fully well realizing it's got to be permitted, this, that, and the other. But right now we have no connectivity whatsoever through here that cr allows that to be in accordance with our comprehensive plan, a trail hub or a pedestrian public way through. When, when you do your site walk, I'd encourage you to walk up and down the trail here again. We, I walk it almost every day. And every single day I walk to, on that so trail. It's quite, it's quite a wetland. I've it's cleaned, not, I've cleaned that trail. Yeah, and, and beside it is quite a wetland. Mm -hmm. And it's quite an endeavor right now to just, uh, to just widen this to 20 feet. <laughs> And I think, you know, the chief, of all the places, and I'm not against trails mm -hmm. at all, of all the places to put a trail, this is absolutely the worst spot that you could pick to put a trail through here. Apparatus are going to be screaming down this street. They're, I don't think they're going to be dark screaming at night. At that point. <laughs> you want kids on there? Oh, there's already kids, you know, and mm -hmm. beer cans and so on. Mm -hmm. I, I really think, uh, and maybe you ought to get the chief to speak to it, but... I think putting a trail right beside that egress, emergency egress road, would be just not a great idea. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I ask a question? Why would we put people going into this area and spend time and money to go through here when in the comprehensive plan and one job that John Stoll, James, and myself worked on was a sidewalk plan. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you have the sidewalks go up Sullivan towards the library and even put sidewalks down Logan Street? Wouldn't that make more sense? I was going to answer to that. Okay. Well, the chairman of, answered that. We're not going to the trails yeah. in the wintertime. So people in the winter won't be able to use it. Uh, so it just, it's a question I have. It doesn't make it's a more good, sense It's a me. great question. I know, just going back to the question, the, the comment that you made, Tom, was about why did we, about the sidewalks that we didn't require Les Bodwell to put in on his two projects. And the reason was because we waived them. Because, and specifically the one on Old Pine Hill Road, I walked that a lot. The roads aren't engineered to put sidewalks in. We couldn't have. Both sides have ditch. They're ditched, and there's no, there's no stormwater drains there. We need to run a stormwater line up there. We contractor has to do that's part of their requirement we, that was that was uh, i don't think the requirement is for them to rebuild our streets to yeah. put in a sidewalk. yeah there was no re there, there was no way that we could have done that I, I don't there was think no that's the way that we could have done that and at that project it would have probably been over I mean, we need to i know we've we've run we've extended the one up pine hill road which is great but we need to do the one up sullivan street now so and i agree with what steve said is putting those we need to run focus on putting the sidewalks in there because i walked pine hill road or sullivan street the other night right where this right of way was and i guess i can go and kind of counter to what i'm saying but <laughs> there's no sidewalk there and the cars are flying by there once they pass the stop sign so i agree they with park that on the sidewalk but people this is differentiate. <laughs> What's that? Why weren't sidewalks required? well maybe we will require them because for your parking lot that you're trying that to build <laughs> well you know, past mistakes don't make it. I, I understand. We can't look at the past mistakes that the board has, has made, but 
it, there's got to be just something in here, an indication of approval, just something that just says public access will not be shut down. Obviously, like, Chief doesn't want people walking through his employees' parking lot back there with all his firefighters. We don't want people hanging out back there, but at least have some type of access there to, to get through and along the backside of the police station. Don't put up these big, you know, no trespassing signs. Where'd you, where'd you point a bill? Yeah. yeah, I'm connected now. So. <laughs> He's got his leash on. No, I mean, we're, we're planning for the front side of this building to be very, you know, town friendly. I mean, it this, is, but it, people walk through there right now, well, and so I, I so, so that, if you bring people around and past that yeah. and to yeah. the other side, then they're into the open field. How far? I mean, I don't know how far that is, but how far are you now from the all the? Would you be from fire apparatus, police apparatus? I, I'm. At I that don't point, have a dog in this race. I know. But as just the safety architect, that's much better idea. I, I just don't want you to. I think it, it wouldn't be wise to go up and down this the one road there. That's really, and I and I'm sorry. Oops, I'm crying. <laughs> okay, no, I'm, I'm talking about being in the weeds. Which road? Which road? The, the, the Sullivan, Sullivan one. This path, access road. It's really is going to be difficult and I think dangerous. This road right here, it's a 10 foot path. We're widening it to 20 feet. Right, because now you're making it two way. It was originally <laughs> no, one way, one, wasn't it? It's only one out. It's, it's, one it's only way. going out. Oh, I out thought Todd said that it was going to be two way traffic. Only. Two way traffic for apparatus? <laughs> only for fire trucks. Yeah, it's so no it is two way. But only one at a time. Right, right, right. Yeah, they don't, they're not coming and going okay. like that. Yeah. So I would I would agree I that not. I think that that is probably not the best spot. Yeah, right. I can understand. You know, as a as someone driving a fire truck, the last thing you want to be worried about, you got a lot of things in your mind. The last thing you want to worry about is is somebody going to be in the road when I come down when I come down the road. Right. 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 Well, I mean, at one o'clock in the morning, if somebody wanders down the road, I don't think we can stop that. But well, yeah. as far as a an open public access, I don't. I agree that that I don't think that is the best spot. But around the it back just, side, it's but just that around, it, around that side yeah, and up that side. We don't want to remove the chief. Yeah. Hi, I'll my hail name is Dennis Plan. I'm the Berwick Fire Chief, um, <laughs> and I like the walking pass. I have nothing against them. Believe me. My concern with the access road being used as a walking path is public safety. And I say that the road is uh, going to be built at a 20-foot width and we just talked about somebody mm -hmm. did about apparatus only going out one way mm -hmm. we plan at some point in time having to come in the other way so you never know what's going to happen i know what it's planned for only one way out yeah but something could happen on logan street where i can't get back in so that option has got to remain open the trucks with the mirrors are 10 feet wide should i have to come in and out with a truck I just barely make it, and to have pedestrians walking on that particular route is going to be dangerous for them. I had a, like, like I said, I had a chance to be in the Esterbrook School, and uh, if you haven't gone in there, um, they've done all the cleanup. They've taken out all the, the, the tiles and this, that, and the other, and they've actually ground the floors down in some areas and stuff. But as I'm sitting in there and walking around doing the lights, it dawned on me that... Can I, can you, uh, just for Frank, I want to, after Frank, I want to talk about this picture right here. So I was, don't... Well, I, yeah. I want to talk about this one too also, yeah. but it dawned on me that other things that we had brought up in the recreation master plan are things like a splash pad or a skateboard park. And if you go inside that Esterbrook school, it's an ideal spot in there to establish a skateboard park. So... From a cost savings perspective, one of the thoughts I came up with is if we demo this thing, why don't we only demo the superstructure? Plan on leaving the, the foundation walls and the, and the slab and have the ability to use it with other things that down the road we, we wanted to put in, a skateboard park being one of them. I, I can answer that. We need the fill underneath there. We have to over excavate this entire site because it was filled with unsuitable soils and it was never grubbed originally. So all of this land, all of this soil in here when we did the test pits, we need for structural fill. And, and, if, and, and also this area that we need to grade, if you look back at the grading plan, 
to, for apparatus to be able to make the turn and get in. The slope, we've taken, we've, we can't leave that school there. The edge but of the you, school is right on here, unless you built like a 10-foot retaining wall. But if you leave the four-foot <laughs> foundation wall that's there in the footer and stuff, it's, and you, you actually use that as a partial, and you slide the driveway over a little bit, is there room to come across, come up on a slope, and have a benched area, which now if you had people walking, walking through... They would be going, they would be going up, well up above any traveled way on a benched kind of a pathway, and it would continue all the way up. I, I think we ought to really look at the merit of possibly using that Estherbrook School Foundation f for something. We, we need to take the fill out from it, underneath. It, it, we, you, can we, buy, we, you can buy fill at a cost, I realize. Um, you want it? It is... And also, as Andy pointed out, is the way it is, is we would have about a 10-foot retaining wall at the back of that parking lot. So now you're going to direct pedestrians up over there 10 feet above the parking lot. Is, you know, no, it, I'm saying they're walking in front of the wall, okay, and that wall then could become a, a, a mural wall. Uh, so other things to attract people to the downtown and walk through. I mean, did, I know you had a lot of meetings. You guys had a lot of meetings. Did Every the Envision Berwick? Did you meet with the Envision Berwick at all during the course of pulling these things, to, pulling these plans together? Is, is I'm part of the Envision Berwick. James has been involved. Did He's Envision Berwick. You meet with Berwick. the committee. Is, <laughs> is, uh, can I can I just ask then why didn't you stand up for the vision? Yeah. Because is I agree with the Envision, but it's a matter of what the townspeople voted for. The townspeople voted last November, two to one, to get a $6 million bond to build a new fire station and to renovate the police department. But they also and then voted. they also, and then they also voted for us, two to one, to put it at the Estabrook School. Correct. I advocated Correct. for it up, right. It doesn't matter what you have to do. All right, how about this? But, so, but can I see this? My question is, it's just, I feel like this is so much an after the fact if, 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 if people had been, the right people had been involved all along, this discussion would not even be happening. All right, I think we're co almost getting into like anyway. a public comment yeah. kind of session. Is, well, so I, wa I want to go back. If you go to back to that other the, pic the, 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 the picture. The yeah. All right, what about this? So this is coming in, this is School Street here, and then we're coming in here, and this is that one way already. If right. people walk in here, can something come up over here by this E-shaped parking lot and can this all be used, this whole area all be used for Town of Berwick recreation? It should and be. Just one keep of, one it, of the, keep well, it green as, space. As, as I said at uh, uh, one of our first meetings. Can that? <laughs> it, as, as I said at one of our first meetings, one of the things we've been talking about in conjunction with this is solar power. And we talked about using solar power on the roof of the new fire station and the police station, but also using that space in behind the two buildings for a solar power field. Well, forget about that, and maybe we can use it for recreation. So and then maybe, maybe we're, we're we can then at, have a we're consensus. We're looking at ways that we're trying to save the town money if we can put the power in and cut the cost of electricity to all the town buildings we have other recreation opportunities i, I got i got you but i think we're all i think we're kind of looking that this is not feasible this is not feasible yeah, anymore so we're, we're trying to build if a consensus have, That's if you had a way to come in around here and just you know continue up around logan street and just if this could stay open and just a a, a nice gravel path as, as I said previously, is is nothing in any of these can it, plans? No, can it just a gravel that, path be put it, in? Is there nothing in to any just of these delineate. plans to say that we cannot do this in the future? But well, nothing is saying that you can't that. do it now I either. Comment the parking lot that you keep going back to over here. Yeah, that's where police personnel park, and and sometimes they park their cars in that area as well. So now you have, you're trying to get through an area where police are parking. You know, private vehicles for parking space, and also there's um, police park there during the summertime and when they're not in the saddle board. So it's another busy area. <laughs> Sweet Jays. Just adds more so time. no trails, no public access, <coughs> this is what it is, and that would, that's good. That's, yeah. that's the consensus, that's, that's what you guys, that's your compromise with us? That's what that's our- That's not what I've been saying. 
Well, I haven't heard anything that you've said that uh, helps us do what we're trying to do to to fulfill the comprehensive plan Tom, which we Tom, are legally I, I, bound to we've, do. We've heard that several times, and I, I and we're not asking to necessarily build them now. Yeah. Asking them just to put a pencil line on a paper and identify it as a corridor or a passage, a pathway, or or something, so that it at least has some. Standing well, Frank, because the, as you pointed out to me before once you put a figure out there once you put a line on a paper That's the only thing people are going to remember So why can't we say that we'll build the building we'll put it in and we can put a line in there that we will explore the future. Yes, because what happens is you're not yeah. <laughs> you're not the selectman anymore And I'm not and I'm not on the yeah, planning but, board yeah. and then people forget about and we have it. nothing to hold yeah, your so feet to the fire you just Put a little dotted line on there. just says proposed future Recreational. I mean, we've been saying we're going to put a sign trail. out front here to notice meetings, and we've been talking about that for seven years. It's never going to happen. <laughs> that, that's it. That's it. And that just assurances that there's not going to be it's a big, like, a big so sign that, that says same, stay by out. That same point then is we talked about a riverfront. That's never going to happen, but it has, hasn't it? And that's because of the dedication of the people involved, not in the selectmen, but in vision, in the planning. So it's up to those boards to continue this movement. I'm not saying to stop it. I'm just saying that is, <clears throat> as I said earlier, is every dollar you take out of this project, talk to him about what's that, going to Tom, be done. And I was going to bring that yeah. up. I was going to bring that up, Tom. That's, that's your job. That's why I don't want to be a selectman because that's unfortunately, that's the job that I don't want to have to tell the chief to do that. That's your job. That We're not in the business of doing that. But, but look, look can, can we plan a site walk? We already have a site walk planned yeah. for two weeks. Yeah. Let's plan a site walk for two weeks. Let's walk the property and let's go back there and say, gee, you know, back behind these trees in the parking lot, can we just delineate something, a little dotted line on the plan that says, in the future, this is what this area is for? Because we know how pe Andy, people can forget. Can you go back to the, uh, the, the drawing, the, the site plan drawing? Because I'm going to go to not my selectman, not my chairman of the board thing, but is... You know, we talk about the access here. We talk about, you know, this obviously with off to the south side here where the uh, retention pond is. It's going to be hard getting through there. Is, you know, I, I talked to, to Todd. Anything we do to widen this, any amount, is going to require further DEP permits, further Army Corps of Engineer permits. And frankly, we don't have the time for that. So is <clears throat> between the driveway and the abutting property, there is land there. Is I am sure, knowing how people are, that there's going to be a walking path through there eventually. Well, there might be, because we, we might require it on well, your plan. So it is, is, <laughs> you're um, sure, we're sure. So is, you know, is, let's see, is for, once the building starts coming down, once the building starts coming down, there's not going to be access to the site anyways. We're going to block it off due to insurance and safety reasons. There's going to be a year that nobody's going to be able to access that until the property is complete and we have our occupancy. Is It gives us a lot of time to work on what we're going to do to help do this. Tom, just a, just a dotted line, proposed future trail. It's, there's gonna going to have to from, be something. Going from the parking lot up to Logan Street, proposed future trail. Width, That's yeah. it. What kind of width are you looking at? Know, What's that? What kind of width of trail? I don't know a standard trail. That's, uh, okay. Six feet. I mean, well, we can discuss that. You, go you can by, discuss you go that later in the future, plan, but, but I'm just saying. comprehensive plan in your zoning. Is just I've, I've, just I've note it on the our, plan. Hey, it's all it's we're our asking. comprehensive plan and our zoning. Right. We all developed right. this together. It, it, it's a, it, it, it says that any trail system should be six feet wide. Six feet wide. So, our proposed six foot wide future trail. For, just for a, access. Just a dotted line up there. So. And that's it. Because I think we can rally. I think we could get around that. I, I, we have I, to, there I has to be really something. So the, there has to be something. And so the future solar array and all that, you can put that aside because if that's not on this plan, that's not, that's not happening unless you come back for it. But we need access. You are, at this point, removing 
the access that is there right now, which goes absolutely against the comprehensive plan, which would be illegal for us to do. We cannot enforce something that is illegal. We can't put but it on there. You're good up. You're good with that. You're good with the dotted line. Pro proposed future put it on there. trail, yeah. six foot. Yeah. That will be on the... If you can get that on there, I think that we can end this conversation Todd, right now. You, could you come up here, Todd? This is a drawing that you guys gave me back in April. And it's, apparently it's different than this site plan. As I yeah. said, once you put a line on a paper, that's what the people remember. No, no but I mean, it, up here, like a flat spot you had proposed. And this is the building. And this is what I was talking about. If there was some merit in saving this wall. Yeah. Okay, pull this over a little bit. Yeah, and you can see the contours going through. Well, because you wanted the yeah, fill. So that was cut the, you cut the whole fill out of there to, amount, to get it. But well, this plan didn't do that. This yeah. plan left this pretty Just level. That, that yeah. plan move on. On. I know. I think Once we got the geotech Frank, can we take a look at this on the site walk? At, well, I just I just definitely want to make sure it's staked out yeah. out there. So, yeah. that, so when we yeah, go so out there, you have reference points. This was a sketch plan in April. The geo was done in June. And they went out and did eight borings and seven test pits. And once we, we had all that data, and we realized how good yeah. the fill was. Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Then we wanted to use because it. Because this, this I'm, I'm getting to that to point, a, Frank, Frank. I think I we could right. probably come up with some grading. So I, let's, let's, let's continue this conversation and take a look at that. At the site walk. At the site walk. At I think we should do 5 o'clock on that site okay. walk. Yeah, we're going to have to. And that would be, I'm sorry, I don't have the my. The 5th, September 5th. September 5th, OK. So 5 o'clock, September 5th. I just have is there, is there potential that we add that onto a plan two weeks before the fifth? So after the site walk, we could potentially have final approval. We're still going to have the public hearing open, so so we can't get final approval on the fifth. I don't think you're going to get final approval. I wouldn't. I wouldn't set your. Uh, I wouldn't. You know, set your heart on that. Because normally we do the site. You know, normally, the rolling normally we of do the, the eyes. <laughs> no, normally we do the site walk and then the public hearing yeah. or do it at the same time. But because other questions and people might come out to the site walk, that's why we wanted to leave the public hearing open. So I, I really think that we need to move on from, from this right now. And just point. one more question of Andy. Frank, I really, no, you know, I just, a lot of people, I, really I just like wanted to know, <laughs> <laughs> I just want, well, I just wanted to know that little warming kitchen appendage that's out on the building, at one point in time, you had mentioned that you could possibly take that off. Mm -hmm. Is that still, because that would then widen that little strip between the two buildings. Is that still um, a possibility? The, the police are really looking for that to be, uh, they don't have a bathroom out that way, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a possibility that they take away their well, maybe that, I mean, one bathroom, how much does that cost? That might be enough to build a trail. About $10,000 for a bathroom? I'm taking back this evidence processing. Oh, copy, copy. Is it a bathroom or not? No, Sorry. apparently it's not. It's not. <laughs> I'm mistaken. It's on the be, 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 the Because side. if you read the recreation master plan, they also wanted a uh, public bathrooms in the Estherbrook right. Park area. <laughs> the question would be, if that was going to be a bathroom, could it also serve the public for a bathroom? I think that's an awful idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. Right. The Dover Fire st or, um, Police Station has a public bathroom. It's beautiful. I mean, right, we'll, can we turn that off? We'll be, able to see, we'll be able to see it on the site walk. Okay. But <laughs> to the right of the police station is the most natural grade, whether that makes the most sense. Isn't it? You know when you go to those work conferences and on a Friday at 355, <laughs> somebody raises their the hand fact. and says, I have another, uh, that's Frank. I've been quiet for nine years. It's <laughs> his first day back. <laughs> All right. This guy came to training. Raises his hand. Yep. Next on the agenda is the subdivision amendment for 4TC Lane. This is map. R37, lot 6A1. It's in the R2 zone, and Thomas Corliss is the applicant. This Actually, poor guy. Yeah, <laughs> James is on this one. Okay. Hey, everybody. Thomas Corliss is proposing the creation of one lot at 4 TC Lane. It's in the R2 zone. Mr. Corliss's land is part of a previously approved subdivision from 1992. On file is the Hodgson subdivision. Mr. Corliss would like to donate land to a family member, and in some cases he will be allowed to by right under the exemption for a gift to a relative. However, on the previously approved plan on Note 10, it states 
no further subdivision without planning board approval. That's why he's here at 9 o'clock p.m. tonight. <laughs> Condition of approval, note four states, all proposed wells, all proposed wells are drilled or driven to bedrock and cased in steel, casing to be set and grouted a minimum of 20 feet into the bedrock. Again, th these are the notes from the 1992 plan, which he's subject to. Um, Mr. Corliss is soil scientist, indicated wetlands may be impacted by the driveway crossings or filling for the house site. And the Hodgson plan states wetlands cannot be filled without approval from the Army Corps of Engineers. The proposed lot eight on the plan meets all dimensional requirements of the zone. Uh, the right of way is proposed to remain gravel for the two house standard. Additional lots in, on TC Lane would require paving. Uh, again, this is just the second, so he's good for gravel standards. So discussion points and decision for the board tonight. What are the details of the method of wa water supply to lot eight? Will wetlands need to be filled? And I guess we'll start there. Okay, I'm gonna have the applicant come on up. My name's Tom Collis. I live at 4 TC Lane. Just trying to help my sister out and give her a lot, mean so I got 25 acres. So I guess the question is, so is the, the well proposed to be drilled or driven to bedrock encased in steel? Yeah. And the casing will be grouted a minimum of 20 feet into the bedrock. They'll be at least probably 40 feet because that's what I got on my well. Good. And uh, what, what, what lands need, need to be filled? Um, the driveway's already in that goes through the wetlands, so I don't think we're going to impact the wetlands at all. No additional. I mean, yeah, I look. Yeah. We're going to, we, we're coming way up on high ground where they're going. Okay. So the next questions would be, are the submitted materials sufficient for the approval of the creation of Lot 8 and or is a public hearing necessary? Where's that well going to be? It's not, it, the well's not on the... It's not determined yet. It'll be 100 feet from where the test pit is. Okay. There's a spot where the test pit is. Test pit's up uh -huh. towards the road. Yeah. Yep. So well, probably behind the house. There's no problem with the Randazzo proximity to their subsurface system. I mean, do you know where theirs is? They're yeah, quite a ways. Quite a ways. I couldn't tell you to the inch, but it's. it's well I don't think we're going to impact because their wastewater is going to be more towards the driveway. What is the space? 120 or 100? 100, 100 feet. 100 yeah, feet it's 100 feet. Yeah. Oh, there's a plenty here. And this still is a private drive going back? Yep. Do you think we need to have a public hearing? Um, you had the abutters. Did you, any of the abutters here? Or? I did not send anything to any abutters. You didn't go to any abutters yet. But there's like nine of them. How many on the list, James? Yeah, yep, nine. I mean, I think... In most, like I said in the memo, in most cases, this would be, this would have no oversight. Uh. You know, it would just happen without, we would know after the fact. It requires planning board approval. I mean, they've created an engineered plan that will be recorded. This is just like what we did with that kind of lot line adjustment the last time. Yeah, this, this, uh, uh, not under normal circumstances, this is a gift to a, a family relative and a gift is not required to go to the planning board mm -hmm. for subdivision. But because of that language. But that because was of the, that language. In the, okay. On the I don't, I don't think a public hearing is necessary. Yeah. And I think that this is pretty much, uh, I mean, I, I think there's the submitted materials are sufficient for the approval of the creation of lot eight. I feel pretty comfortable with that. Do you know if the abutters know you're doing this, Mr. Corliss? Um, I know a few of them know about it. I don't know if all of them know about it. I can I can send something out that says, you know, I mean, <coughs> I guess but there I'm, is no there is no requirement. For there's no. no requirement I know, but we've always called our ordinances and everything a friendly ordinance. I mean, and, 
And then I can give them a courtesy heads yeah, up. A that courtesy was, notice. You know, approved and they fit under the dimensional requirements. And the only thing is because if he starts drilling a hole out there or he starts putting a foundation in, you're going to have nine people down here wondering what's going yeah, on if yeah. they haven't at least been apprised that Mr. Corliss is moving forward with a gift to a family member. Sure. I, I mean, agree, that's be no appropriate. Yeah, that no would be period. appropriate notification. Yeah. I mean, we can move fo straight forward here with approval of the application this yes. evening. Yes, I mean, your, the notification to the abutters would just be that Mr. Corliss appeared before the planning board and um, received an amendment for the approved subdivision and to include one lot. James, you number. promise. Yeah, okay. Cross you your promise. heart. That you'll, cross your heart that you'll do that. Right, right. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, sir. Cross your I'm heart. Start doing. <laughs> <laughs> but you will get that done. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sign up Monday. All right. And so, yes, if you um, choose not to hold a public hearing, which it sounds like um, you could approve this. All right. There you go. Would anybody care to make a motion? I move that we approve this amendment to the subdivision at 4 TC Lane. I'll second. Further discussion? And this plan will be signed by us and recorded correctly? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Look it has to be. Yeah. I, my I just looked in 93. I signed this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any further discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Okay. That's five nothing. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So I can start cutting trees. <laughs> Apparently you can. <laughs> as long as you have the right permits to do so. All right, uh, James, do we have this? Uh, oh, we have here. the yeah. findings of fact. Yeah. All right, let's try okay. to stay focused here so we can get out of here before 9. No, he's already got it. Oh, you've got um, yours? Okay. Yeah. Do you These are ours. Okay. Did, yeah. oh. Did you grab my copy? <laughs> no. Kind of tired. Yep. For right. findings of fact. Next on the agenda is the findings of fact that have to be approved for uh, 537 Portland Street. The applicate the plan which we approved at the last meeting. So Correct. we're just meeting to Correct. approve the findings of fact. Just needing to give the chairman an amen to something. Anybody like to make a motion? Uh, I will be abstaining from this one. Oh, actually. Uh oh. I have a little bit of a problem here. We can't have the uh, acting planning board chair because he's no longer the active pl acting planning uh, oh, board chair. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I suppose. For him or in his abstention, you could have your new vice chair sign that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, somebody she likes making a. Uh, what do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> you would be signing these. Okay, I'll sign it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Because you, well, you were the most. Do we have a motion yet? No, we don't. Okay. No. That we accept the findings of fact. I'll, sec I'll second. Yep. Further discussion. All in favor. All opposed? All abstaining? Okay. All right, so yeah, you'll sign these. James will give you the copy and then okay. you'll sign those. Uh, so we need to schedule a time for meeting with South Berwick. Well, it's a heads up. Um, I will help coordinate scheduling yeah. that for you. And conveniently, you're their town planner. Um, well, not me. I'd be talking to myself out of both sides, but my executive director is actually their town planner. Oh. So um, we you will now. Paul Schumacher. Uh, Oh. So um, Paul and I will coordinate that effort. Um, I'm hoping it would only be one meeting. The way the state law is written, you have to have a joint meeting um, when a development crosses town lines. This one um, does. However, the only way it crosses the town line is that they're proposing emergency access through an existing um, property in Berwick. And so if you choose after that first meeting to waive your rights to review the rest of the project, you certainly have that ability. Um, we're talking about 32 lots off Meadow Brook Lane, which is off Knight Pond Road, which is off Route 4. <laughs> we're very familiar with that yes, property. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And luckily we have our side of the road being cleaned up and yeah we did our due diligence on that is all right it though is it being fixed y y yes um i can provide you just a quick update on that as well if you want i know we all want to get out of here um um ryan has been working on the town's behalf 
We have received um, weekly notes from meetings um, regarding the site. Um, he is making sure that he is holding their feet to the fire on everything. In fact, they are back in front of DEP to build an appropriate um, washout pit, which they hadn't done. Um, and so uh, he is working very diligently with them, and um, uh, they also may be coming back to you for an amendment to their plan. However, I've suggested that we hold off until the DEP issues the permits that they need to issue on this project because there are um, some issues that um, I think are tied to the DEP permit, and I'd rather not have you folks approve anything prior to DEP on this one. Okay. Brian's great. Yeah, he's been working really hard on this application for you folks to make sure it gets built correctly. Nice. Great. Anybody else? All right. Anybody else? Uh, all right. Last call for public comment session. If you'd like to come back up here. No, no Tom. <laughs> Except for you, uh, Tom. <laughs> anybody for public comment session? They'll, feel free to come forward. We have the whole night yeah. here. So. August 24th, uh, Sullivan Square, a uh, huge party. Uh, if you're not there, you're square. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a good one. Uh, next on the agenda is the adjournment. I move that we adjourn tonight's Thursday, August 15th meeting. I'll second. All in favor? Can I abstain? No. <laughs> <laughs>